Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Christine Robinson, Mayor of West Gray, and welcome to the November 17th, 2020 West Gray Council meeting. This evening, we are using both audio and video to conduct this electronic meeting. On item one, call to order, all members of council are present. We have a quorum. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on our West Gray website, being www.westgray.com. Technology for this meeting is being managed by staff. Please refrain from clicking buttons unless you are prompted. So before we begin, I will ask Supervisor Hewlett to walk us through some of the features of this new way to handle our uh, council meetings, uh, uh, more features with regard to the Zoom meeting software. Supervisor Hewlett, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and welcome everybody. Before I begin, if you get disconnected at any time, you can dial 1-647-558-0522. And enter the meeting ID 89162099052. Both members of council and staff have been briefed on the various features of the Zoom meeting software and will be using the raise their hand function in Zoom to speak. They will also be using the green check mark to vote in favor of a motion and the red X to vote against. Each member of council following a vote will then be called upon verbally to confirm their vote for the benefit of any guests who have called in rather than joining us online. If you need any technical assistance throughout the meeting, please send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, and I will attempt to assist you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Supervisor Hewlett. On item two, moment of reflection. For those uh, listening in and also watching our council meeting, uh, please take a moment, uh, a quiet moment, if you will, at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. On item three, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Members of council, is there anything to declare at this point? Seeing none. We are now moving on to item four, delegations and presentations. Members of council, please note, as I know you will, that these are timed delegations. You'll see we have a delegation starting at 7.05. So we're doing uh, really well here, Sarah. We'll uh, have you come forward in just a moment with, uh, with Barb Feedy as well. Um, so 7.05, we also have a 7.20 p.m and a 735 um, delegation as, as the concluding third presentation. So Madam Clerk, I think we're just two minutes off, but having said that, shall we continue on? Thank you. Okay, item four, 4.1, Sarah Coley, Certified Health Executive, Sarah C. Consulting, and Barbara uh, Barb Feedy, Director of Social Services, Gray County, regarding a community safety and well-being planning for the municipalities of Bruce and Gray. Members of council and, and um, citizens listening in, this is a very good presentation, I must say, uh, both from uh, Sarah Coley and uh, Barb Feedy. Um, I heard the presentation as well as uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson at, uh, at County Committee of the Whole last week. Uh, so with that, welcome to you, Sarah and uh, Barb. Please uh, take it away. Thank you so much for having us tonight. We're very pleased to be able to speak to you tonight with regards to the community safety and well-being planning process for the municipalities of Bruce and Gray. So you do have the presentation, I believe, in your packets. And uh, knowing we're on a tight timeline, I did want to just give you the highlight overview of where we have come from and where we are today with regards to the planning process. If you can flip to slide three, please. So why community safety and well-being planning? So we undertook this planning process because um, the government of Ontario through the Ministry of the Solicitor General realized that uh, 10 years ago, actually, this planning process started for the province, that we really wanted to look at a reduction in crime across the region. And it was identified that in order to do that in an upstream way, in a cost-effective way, in a way that allowed for people to really feel the impacts of health and well-being and safety and well-being, they needed to focus on having communities where everyone has a sense of belonging, opportunities to participate, 
and where individuals and families can meet their needs for education, health care, food, housing, income, and social and cultural expression. And these upstream uh, interventions do have an impact in reducing crime. So the process was legislated under the Police Service Act, Services Act early last year, and the two counties and 16 participating municipalities, of which West Gray is one, entered into an agreement to complete one shared regional plan. At this point in time, we believe this is the largest and most unique uh, collaboration in Ontario. Next slide, please. And so the Ontario framework, for those of you who aren't familiar with the planning process, really focuses on four rings of intervention or four areas of intervention. Uh, there's the social development, which is really looking at promoting and maintaining community safety and well-being. So this is the very upstream early on interventions, um, like early childhood uh, education, making sure that people are fed and housed. Um, and then the second realm is prevention, where we're looking at proactively reducing identified risks and implementing um, evidence-based situational measures. So this looks at programs or policies that uh, uh, tackle priority risks to community safety and well-being before they result in crime or victimization or situations of harm. When we flip to the next slide and look at uh, area three, that's risk intervention. This is where we want to look at mitigating situations of elevated risk. So this is where multiple sectors will work together to prevent an incident from actually occurring, whether it's crime, harm, or victimization, um, and to reduce the need for then on reliance on the incident response part of the framework. An incident response, you can see here, red in the middle, um, this is the critical and non-critical incident response. So this is usually crime and safety interventions that involve police, EMS, um, and fire, as well as um, organizations like child welfare organizations or people having to be apprehended under the Mental Health Act. So what you can see from the diagram here is the goal is really to focus on the outer larger rings of the framework so that we reduce the need for those downstream interventions like risk intervention and incident response. Next slide, please. Our advisory committee that we convened last fall is very large. We have 72 partners at the table, um, all senior leaders. Uh, we have two counties, 16 municipalities. We have two First Nations partners, all eight police services and 14 police services boards are at the table. We have six groups, uh, organizations from children and youth services or youth justice. We have all three education um, school boards and we have Georgian College at the table. We also have nine additional community and social service agencies, five services involved in health and mental health, and we have six community committees or collaboratives that are already running um, and supporting safety and well-being in the community. Next slide, please. So the process has been about 14 months from start to plan implementation, plan presentation, which is where we are now. Um, and I'd just like to highlight a key piece of this was community engagement, which we undertook in the spring from February 1st to March 22nd. We had an online and hard copy survey open to the community. And we had almost 2,000 residents in Bruce and Gray complete that survey to provide us with really in-depth information about their perceptions of risk related to safety and well-being. Um, and one thing I like to highlight for people here is that Halton Region, which was one of the um, pilot groups that did this planning a few years back, have a population of three and a half times what we do in Bruce and Gray, and we had three and a half times more participation than they did in their first round of community engagement. Next slide, please. Uh, another key piece of the work is the connections that we've had to a variety of organizations, uh, both provincially and nationally. So we have been supported by the Canadian Municipal Network on Crime Prevention, who led a lot of the work around community safety and well-being planning. Um, and we've also been a part of the Ontario Municipal Social Services Association uh, working group of coordinators for community safety and well-being for Ontario. Next slide, please. Uh, this is our timeline. As I said, it took 14 months and we're currently at the point of being able to look at plan adoption by the lower tier municipalities. Um, and we're also, we also have an indicator report which is data related, for, related to our local data to really present uh, and collate the local data around the community risks in Graham Bruce um, that we hope to be able to roll out as well alongside the plan in the new year. Next slide, please. Our model, you can see the image here, it has a variety of components. We were really clear about roles and responsibilities. 
And where we are currently now as we finish our work of the plan and move into phase two is really looking at identifying those action tables related to our priority areas of risk, which I will share with you now. Next slide, please. All right, so when we looked at the priority areas for risk, if you flip to the next slide, um, we originally thought we would tackle three regionally, but we know that they're extremely interrelated um, and they were so closely linked when you look at the data and resident perception that we've included five in our plan. And we know that action is already being taken in many of these, if not all of these across the region already, but we did wanna highlight some key information for you. So for priority risk area one, this came up as addiction and substance use. Um, a couple of the key pieces of information we know are that regular heavy drinking remains a known issue in our community and self-reported use continues to track higher than the rest of Ontario. We know that emergency department visits in Gray and Bruce, we see that more than half are linked to alcohol and we have seen a recent two and a half to three times increase for opioid related visits. We also know that school School student alcohol and cannabis use is increasing, although we know that's not necessarily reflected in the statistics currently because of the legalization of cannabis in 2018. And we also know that addictions and substance use is the cause of increasing hospitalization and death in our region. Next slide, please. Priority risk area two came up as mental health, which for many of us working in the, in the various sectors across Grand Bruce came as no surprise. Um, we know that self-rated mental health indicators show approximately 20% of people in our region continue to experience a lot of stress and 15% at least are seeking help for mental health issues. We know that more than 30% of students from grades 7 to 12 experience moderate to severe psychological distress and many of those, a third of those, still say they don't know where to turn for help. We know that both EMS and police services in the region have seen increases in calls related to mental health concerns and that 211 calls related to mental health needs have increased as well. And we know that we have seen a, a tripling in the rate of self-harm emergency to visits among young, visits, department visits among young females locally compared to the province. And that Bruce and Gray males aged 25 to 44 years have higher hospitalizations and deaths by suicide than Ontario. Priority risk area three is crime prevention. And some of the key concerns that we're looking at there um, are that the criminal court cases show trends are increasing over time for most offenses. This is an area of concern. So anywhere from a 17 to 27% increase in offenses from 2017 to 2019-20. And overall, although assault injuries are comparable to Ontario rates, uh, Bruce and Gray, the rate of emergency department, visits, emergency department visits due to assault is higher than the Ontario rate. So this is certainly something we need to dive into a little more. Um, and we have worked with each of the four local police services and the OPC detachments on this data. And we'll be looking at this in more detail because it's difficult to compare the data based on how they report. So we know we have to dive into this more deeply as well. Priority risk area four <clears throat> came up as housing and homelessness, which again, for those of us uh, living and working in the areas of no surprise, but a few of the key statistics we need to keep in mind here is that um, the region has more owned dwellings and fewer rental dwellings. And so this can cause a, a situation of concern for many families and some areas have more subsidized housing than others. We also know that over 15% of homeowners and almost 50% of renters in Bruce and Gray spend more than 30% of their monthly income on shelter costs. And this is a situation that leads them only one to two paychecks away from losing their housing situation, not being able to pay for their housing. We also know that average housing prices are increased, but still are increasing, but still remain lower than Ontario. And we have very low rental vacancy rates in our region, which is similar to Ontario. It can create a situation where people don't feel they have the ability to leave a rental situation that is perhaps unsafe for them um, or isn't large enough for their needs. We know seasonal housing numbers are high in a few of our municipalities, and we also know that housing wait lists are increasing as our calls to 211 for housing issues. When we look at the priority risk area five, which is poverty and income, um, we know that medium, median household incomes in our region are lower than Ontario and are the lowest in Owen Sound, Hanover, and South Bruce Peninsula. And approximately 20% of children in our region still live in poverty. Um, we know this is highest in here on Kinloss, where it's about 30% of the children and then followed by Chatsworth, Owen Sound, Southgate, and Aaron Elders, Elderson, which are all either 25% or higher. 
We also know that there are trends from various organizations that are showing an increasing need for support such as Ontario Work, Ontario Disability Support Program, and things like the United Way Backpack Program and Utility Assistance. And we know that over 25% of residents in our region report spending more than 30% of their income on housing. 5% in the past year had missed a rent or mortgage payment or hadn't paid it on time. And 18% report not paying other bills on time because they didn't have enough money. A further 9% reported they ate less because they didn't have enough money to buy food. So when we look at all of these priority areas for risk and we start to look at moving forward action, if you flip to the next slide, please, we wanna really focus on our local solutions and the collective impact we can have. And this plan is designed not to reinvent the wheel. It is designed to leverage the good work already being done across Bruce and Gray by enhancing the collaboration and coordination of the various organizations, committees, and initiatives. Because we know, as I said earlier, good work is being done across all of these uh, priority areas of risk. And it's simply a matter of coordinating, educating the community, and making sure that we're really keeping in close contact and communication with regards to, to the work that we're doing. Next slide, please. Um, as I said earlier, we are also looking at the indicator report. So that's a compilation, a collation of our local data that has informed this plan and will continue to inform the plan related to outcome evaluation. We really need to be looking, especially under the legislation, it calls for it, but we want to know that we're moving the dial when we start to tackle some of these things. And our local, the indicator report that we'll be creating and that's in, in the works right now, um, will really allow us to look at a variety of indicators and areas for concern that we can start to track and monitor in an ongoing way to make sure that we are actually having the impact as we move forward. Next slide, please. Sustainability, of course, we need to keep moving this work forward. And the current discussion um, around the table for the municipalities and the counties is to form a 2021 budget for implementation in the same way the model was created for this current year so that we have a pool of funding to collectively tackle this work. Um, because we know without resourcing, the momentum gained in phase, phase one of the project will be at risk. But by pooling resources, we know we can reduce the duplication of work across municipalities and really bring everyone together so that those overall implement implementation costs are kept low and ensure a streamlined approach. Next slide, please. So next steps for Bruce and Gray. Skip to the next one, please. Thanks, Cody. So what we're really looking, of course, is we're presenting to all of the lower tier councils and under the legislation, this plan needs to be approved, adopted to move forward. We'll be looking then to post the plan in the indicator report and have that annual budget confirmed so we can focus on sustainability. We'll look at the continued work of the coordinator to drive this work forward. And key will be identification of action tables for priority areas of risk. So we can really look at that cross-sector planning and collaboration within the contents of this plan. We'll continue to in, do the in-depth review of local data uh, in order to support further community engagement and the development of action plans for each of those priority areas for risk. And there will be implementation, monitoring, and evaluation and revision of the plan with annual progress reports to the advisory committee, councils, and the ministry. And these will be outlined in the legislation as the planning moves forward for the province. Next slide, please. And that's it. That's where we are. Any questions for Barbara at this point? Well, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. We very, very much appreciate it. Before I go to questions from um, our members of council, or before I even uh, make a statement, I, I would like uh, Clerk Sharbeck to read the recommendation at hand. I would ask if there is a mover and seconder and uh, then we'll take questions. Uh, following the questions, uh, we will, uh, I will call the vote. Clerk Sharbeck, please. To you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council receives the delegation by Sarah Cowley, Certified Health Executive, and Barb Fendi, Director of Social Services, Gray County, regarding community safety and well-being planning. Thank you. Is, the, the, is there a mover for this motion? And certainly I'm looking for check marks for mover and seconder. Councillor Hamilton, are you moving this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I'll move the motion. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Yes, this is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will second the motion. 
Okay, thanks. We'll go for questions first. But what I'd like to say is thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for a very comprehensive presentation. Uh, certainly, uh, the Deputy Mayor and I um, heard the presentation last Thursday at uh, County uh, Committee of the Whole. But uh, we really appreciate the data that's been presented this evening. Um, I find it extremely startling uh, if I look at one of the, the sections on homelessness. Um, where um, individuals are living from one or two paychecks away from a critical time in their life and a critical time in their quality of life. And I, I mentioned this at, uh, at County, but I, I just, um, it's extremely, um, it's extremely interesting that uh, you can drill down to the data to that uh, point. And um, I'm also looking forward uh, on behalf of uh, West Gray Council for further data collection uh, so that lower tiers uh, and also at the county level can utilize the data for decision making, priority setting, and uh, to help with uh, local, uh, locally driven responses. I think that's incredibly important. I also just want to mention that members of the West Gray Police Services Board are here and also uh, Chief Martin. So um, again, thank you very much for the presentation, most enjoyable. With that, members of council, are there any questions of our uh, presenter? Seeing none at this time, um, uh -huh. just as I said it, it's a very usual uh, part. Um, uh, Councillor Townsend, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Uh, my question is really, is your focus going to be on area or by one of the uh, priorities specifically? And I, I could see that it could be either way, um, but I'm wondering as you start looking at your plan going forward, which approach you're going to use? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, certainly when the plan, and we received the planning toolkit from the ministry, they said your planning, your action could actually take place either by a topic or by an area, right? Depending on what your local data and the need showed. Um, and that is what we will be looking at. We do, um, as was uh, hoped for, we do have local data related to resident perceptions and we do have local data depending, based on municipal um, living situations for a variety of the data points as well, so that we can really drill down as we get into the topic of addictions, of mental health, of um, housing and homelessness, we can really look at what are the differences across the region, right? So we know, are we tackling a particular issue for all of the participating municipalities or are there local differences that we need to um, pay attention to and that we need to think about in a different way? So um, it will completely depend on what the data shows us as we dive into it for each of those topic areas. Thank you very much, that was my only question. Thank you, uh, Councillor Townsend. Councillor Shea, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I think we were all just slow to put our hands up because we were being sensitive to allow others to speak before us. Uh, Fair enough. I'm certain that there's gonna be questions. Uh, thank you, Sarah. That was very insightful and informative. Um, I, was, I was concerned when you said at one point um, that what we needed was uh, local solutions because we have uh, very capable local services and it was that it was I think you said simply a matter of coordinating. Um, I'm feeling like it's not simply a matter of coordinating, it's actually a matter of increased investment. Uh, increased investment at the municipal level and increased investment at the provincial level. So we've had lots of examples where, uh, you know, other levels of government have come to us and said, you can do a better job of this with, with no further investment, only by mm -hmm. rearranging some of the pieces. Uh, is that what we're seeing here? I'm glad you brought it up and uh, I'm sure you can appreciate we're hesitant to initially identify that there may be additional resources required because always, especially my background is in health, we want to look at are we using the resources we have most efficiently to begin with, right, as a first step uh, before looking at our additional resources required. I do believe and I believe the advisory and steering committee would say um, that there will be additional resources required down the road, but part of the goal of the project is also to look at shifting some of our resources so that we're focusing more on the upstream interventions that we know have a re greater return on investment, like early childhood um, education and early childhood care, which when you look from a crime prevention perspective, has a $7 return on investment. So for every $1 in invested in early childhood 
care in, in children's care prior to school, you get a $7 return on investment just related to crime prevention. And the, the, the impacts go up from there, up into the 40s and 50s and $60 range when you're looking at specific upstream interventions for mental health and addiction, things that we're catching earlier, right? We know incident response costs more down the road. It's much more costly to deal with situations after they occur than to do the preventative work early on. And so we need to start thinking about how we use our resources um, in that manner. And it's certainly a shift for lots of groups to think about because so much service is driven by incident response um, that we need to start evaluating what are we doing more upstream and how do we slowly start to move that dial on funding. That's not to say we won't need more funding down the road, but it's to say we need to very clearly evaluate where is the money going now and are there gains we can make in coordinating um, and in uh, ensuring that we're looking more at those upstream interventions as well. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure you're not saying that we shift investment from downstream services to upstream services. I th I'm sure you're saying that we expand investment in upstream services. That would, that would be ideal. Yes, we expand those upstream interventions. Eventually, the long-term impact should be that we do potentially require fewer downstream interventions if we're doing it right with regards to social development and preventive strategies, but that's a long-term, that's a long-term game, right? That we really have to wait to, to evaluate the impacts take a much longer time to get to than just simple incident response, right? In incident response, something happens, you deal with it and it's done in the moment, but we know the long-term impacts of things like early childhood education and youth and child mental health services uh, mental health and addiction services for young parents when they have young children. Those things show the fruits of their labor further on down the road. So I'll, I'll, I'll thank you. Uh, that's very helpful. I'll, I'll conclude by asking, you mentioned um, impacts on local budgets in the current budget cycle. Are you making a request to us for uh, uh, some considerations in the current budget cycle? I'll let Barb speak to that. Gray and Bruce counties are both looking at this differently, so I'll let Barb speak to that. Good evening. Thank you again for letting us come to your meeting this evening. Um, I presented a report at County Council. I'm the Director of Social Services for Gray County. So I presented a report at County Council on Thursday and our partner in Bruce County presented previously, I believe on November the 3rd. And we were, um, as Sarah mentioned in the presentation, we were looking at the same funding model for 2021 as is that we're using right now in 2020, which is upper tier commitment. Bruce County is a slightly different funding model than Gray County, but um, I had requested uh, an allocation of $55,000 from the County of Gray from reserves to move to step two, which is the implementation of the plan that we've just presented to you. And after that, we would be looking probably, um, I can say, honestly, I think we'd be looking at investments in the lower, from the lower tier uh, communities because we want to have something in our pocket to show you that we really do believe in this. This is a fundamental shift in how we coordinate and collaborate. We already do a great job of that and we've historically done that because none of us can do this on our own, but this is even bigger and more broad than we've ever seen before. So we're excited about it. We're watching the province become excited about it. It's taken 10 years to get to this point. And unfortunately due to COVID, our um, anticipated date that we were to have met provincially was December 31st. It's been extended, but you can see the momentum that has been built across Gray and Bruce. We continued with this and we are going to meet that deadline. Um, so we were excited because we have an opportunity to utilize the data that you guys are that you uh, have been given just a smidgen of. We have a number of tables that are working really hard at tackling some of these difficult uh, situations, and now we'll be able to coordinate them, and there'll be a dedicated resource for that. So lots to come, lots more to bring back to you. Um, this is just giving you a taste of what we've done for the last 18 months to get this plan off the ground. Anything further, Councillor Shea? No, thank you for that. Oh, you're quite welcome. Uh, we do have two other members of council that wish to speak. I certainly do want to direct your attention. We do have another delegation that was scheduled for 7.20 p.m. Uh, so I would just like uh, council to be mindful that we have a delegation waiting 
And uh, we have a third delegation, well, that was scheduled for 7.35. So members of council, could I just ask you to uh, tailor your questions accordingly? Uh, Councillor Hergert, then Councillor Hutchinson. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. And thank you very much, Sarah and uh, Barb for the reports uh, back to us. I'm actually, my question comes uh, more directed to our police, um, our police service board. I noticed that we're already engaging in uh, mental health um, services partnership through the police services board. And I'm curious, um, this year, Barb, you mentioned that we would uh, carry on with Gray County funding at the $55,000 is what you've recommended. Um, I'm, I'm probably looking more for a local report from our police chief to say, how much would we need year two if 2021 is $55,000? Um, as council, we're trying to make some uh, changes or, or initiatives that partner on uh, mental health. We had the little garden this year, you know, just the more local basic things. But we obviously want to have those complement uh, the community safety and well being plan. What does it take year two to actually hit some of these targets where we don't really have the metrics made yet? I, I'm not sure which one hatches first. So Sarah, I wonder if you could uh, respond to the question. Uh, we're gonna keep the questions specific to the delegation uh, and not uh, to our, our staff at this point. Uh, certainly Chief Martin is uh, listening in, but if you could just uh, Sarah answer it from uh, the context of, of uh, the responsibility for the committee, please. Actually, I'm going to hand this one to Barb, I think, from a funding perspective and a participation perspective. I think it's better from Barb. Sure. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'll be quick. Um, we, I don't have an answer. I, I don't want to say that, but at this point, we're hearing from other various sources. Uh, even today, there was another announcement about funding um, from the feds uh, for some mental health uh, uh, and addictions funding for that is coming to the provinces. So we're we're making noise. We're our information and the data the points that we're we're uh, pulling together. We're pushing that back up, and you're going to see some changes. Uh, again, as I mentioned, fundamentally. I think though that we can safely say that we're going to need a coordinator for this role, regardless of any of the um, um, individual in, um, investments and variety of uh, solutions that we come up with across the two counties, we are still going to need someone to steer it. So when I look at that, uh, that's approximately $100,000 annually that we would need to, to find between Bruce and Gray to keep this work moving and to keep that uh, advocacy. Um, again, someone to apply for those grants uh, that are out there, someone to work with each of the, the um, network co-chairs, uh, lots of those, there's a ton of work that has to be done and it just can't be done off the side of someone's desk. That's what we have been doing. Thank you very much, both of you for your effort on this. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. That's all, thank you. For sure. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson, uh, thank you, Sarah and Barb, for your presentation. Uh, just a quick question, and maybe Councillor Townsend already asked this, but maybe I missed it. Um, the data um, that you've collected, I think it's great to have this data. Uh, it's uh, broken down by municipality, and do we have access to this data? I think in particular, affordable housing, um, it's something that we could look at in terms of budgeting. Is that, uh, is that available to us? So some of it will be able to be broken down locally. It completely depends on the source and that's what the indicator report is really gonna to pull together. So it will outline all of these different indicators and areas for concern. It will tell you how frequently that data is collected, where the source is and how far down it can be broken, whether it's just Bruce and Gray, the whole region or by municipality or even smaller. Um, it completely depends, but that indicator report will really outline all of that. So we can also start to drive towards more consolidated indicators. So we can start to look at the data and say, what do we need to be collecting in order to make sure we're all comparing apples to apples across the region so that we know that when we have an impact, we're tracking it and we can say, yes, these made a difference. So that will be okay. coming through the indicator report. Very great. Yeah, I think the data is very important. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you again, uh, Sarah uh, Coley and uh, certainly Barb Feedy for uh, making the presentation here at uh, West Gray Council. Um, I must say we'll look forward to uh, an update uh, soon. So please come again to, uh, to our council meeting. Very, very much appreciate it. Uh, so with that, yeah, Clerk Charvette, could you please uh, reread the motion at hand, which was moved by Councillor Hamilton, 
seconded by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, and uh, I will then call the vote. Sure, you, Your Worship. The resolution is that Council receives the delegation by Sarah Cowley, at Certified Health Executive, and Barb Bendy, Director of Social Services, Ray County, regarding community safety and well being planning. Thank you. All those in favor, signify with a check mark. Those opposed, signify with an X mark. As I call your name, please state your name and how you are voting. To begin, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Town, uh, Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. That motion carried. Thank you very much. If you could clear your dashboard. We are now moving on to 4.2. Alan Madden, CEO, Southeast Gray Community Health Center and in brackets SEGCHC, end of bracket, regarding Gray Bruce Ontario Health Team Development. So at this time, Clerk Sharbeck, could you read the motion? Okay, Your Worship, the recommendation is that Council receives the delegation by Alan Madden, CEO of Southeast Gray Community Health Center, regarding Gray Bruce Ontario Health Team Development. Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Herger, are you moving this motion? Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hutchinson seconds the motion, yes. Thank you. So now I'd like to welcome Alan Madden, CEO, Southeast Gray Community Health Center. Welcome, and uh, we're looking forward to your presentation and we have uh, your presentation on the screen this evening. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you members of council for allowing me to spend some time with you uh, tonight. Um, the uh, template that we have uh, and the deck that we have is fairly lengthy. And given the short period of time that we have, I've uh, created some notes here. The deck is there for you to review at your leisure, um, but I think I'm gonna get right into the nuts and bolts so that at the end of the presentation, we have some time for questions. Uh, so if you're okay with that, I don't need the slide deck, uh, but it's there for reference for the members of council. Um, and I will, um, uh, I'll uh, work for the notes that I've, uh, that I've drafted in front of me. Uh, that, that sounds way, like a great we'll idea. Have, okay, I think we'll have some time at the end then for questions. So let me, uh, let's talk about healthcare today. Uh, within Great Bruce, there are 40 to 50 different healthcare agencies that deliver care. There are three hospital corporations representing 11 hospitals. There's seven family health teams, one community health center. Uh, there's a um, Canadian Mental Health Association, Keystone Family Services, Chapman House Hospice. Uh, there's a home and community care organization, Lynn Managed Home Care, long-term care organizations, uh, Great Bruce Public Health Unit, paramedicine, and there are service provider organizations that uh, deliver home care that are contracted uh, by the Lynn's. Um, so right now, everybody receives a budget. I receive a budget annually from the LIN uh, through the Ministry of Health, and I'm held accountable by the LIN for delivering primary care uh, and wellness programs in, in my catchment area. But the interaction that I have with the other levels of health care are minimal. And I'm held accountable by my board and by a balanced scorecard. But the services that I have aren't necessarily well integrated into the other, I'll call them silos of health care, home care, long-term care, public health, um, and, as, and acute care. And as a result of that, uh, the journey for a patient going through the system is very difficult. Um, so what the vision is, is that eventually the Gray Bruce Ontario Health Team will have an integrated uh, health delivery system and we will receive one budget uh, and it'll be a bundled care budget that will go to the Gray Bruce Ontario Health Team uh, that organization will be responsible for developing an integrated balanced scorecard with all of the members and all of the healthcare providers that deliver services within Gray Bruce. So we think that it's an opportunity for us to really improve the quality of, of service that we offer right across the system. Um, 
So let's go back a little bit in time. Uh, in the spring, uh, the planning committee, and I'll go through the planning committee uh, in a second. The planning committee for the Ontario Health Team submitted a readiness assessment. Uh, and uh, the readiness assessment was reviewed by the Ministry of Health. It was accepted, and we moved to the next phase, next phase of our development, which is to submit a full application. In advance of the application, uh, the members, all of those 40 to 50 healthcare providers got together and they structured a group called a planning committee whose responsibility it is to complete the application. Uh, the application is a, is a template. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's one that's used by every uh, Ontario health team across the province. Um, and the submission uh, is December 11, 2020. Currently, um, there are a number of stakeholder engagement sessions that are being held across Gray and Bruce, and I volunteered to uh, work with the five um, councils uh, that I um, that catch that, that fall into the uh, southeast Great Catchment area. Uh, and so I'm really pleased to be here to talk about what's going on at the uh, at the OHT. Um, so within the application, we have to identify the planning committee has to identify what are our first year priority is going to be, uh, and it has to be very specific. So we've identified that frail seniors and mental health and addictions are going to be our first year priorities. So if you can imagine that we've got an integrated system of care with all of the different silos working together, we'll all be working on exactly the same performance indicators. And as a result of that, there should be an improvement in the quality of care that's delivered in those two areas. And I can give you an example. We deliver uh, a number of different programs right now in our catchment area to frail seniors. I was just talking to Sarah before the uh, before her session, and we've delivered about 10 to 12,000 meals for isolated seniors since COVID began in March. Uh, so we go after public, we go after funding, um, we go after uh, grants and donations, uh, and we deliver that. We're a charitable organization, and we deliver that um, to a number of different isolated seniors that we've identified within our catchment area. But we also know that paramedicine is doing something, home and community care is doing something, the hospitals are doing something, and the family health teams are doing something, and we're not integrating, and we're not talking about how we could better collaborate and deliver that uh, deliver frail seniors strategy. So the Ontario health team will bring us together, um, and that will uh, it will help to uh, really for, formulate a strategy in the first year around services for frail seniors and uh, also for mental health and addictions. Once the application is complete, we would receive a site visit from the Ministry of Health. They would say yay or nay. We think that you're in a good position right now. Uh, you've got a number of people at the planning table and you're all collaborating and getting along well. We think that we could move to the next phase. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the planning committee is and who's on it. So I talked about all of those various agencies, the 40 to 50 agencies that exist and receive money from the Ministry of Health uh, within Gray and Bruce. The planning committee represents about 18 people who are executive directors and CEOs of those institutions. So on the planning committee, we have physicians uh, who have been appointed by the uh, by their peer groups. We have uh, the three hospital CEOs, uh, myself, uh, all of the family health team executive directors, the executive director of CMHA, executive director of Keystone, uh, the medical officer of health from public health, the, um, we have the um, palliative care lead from Chapman House. We also have plans to introduce a patient family caregiver advisory committee, and there would be representatives from that advisory committee that would also be sitting on the planning committee. Uh, we also have a representative from the Southwest Lynn Home and Community Care. And most recently, we've hired a coordinator or a project manager to assist with um, the development of the, the completion of the application, gathering data, and assisting the planning committee with some of the administrative details that they've got. So again, the vision at the end, once we reach maturity, is that the, the new OHT would receive one budget. We would be held accountable with an integrated balance scorecard where all of the individual service providers that are working within Gray and Bruce are working towards the same ends. And we would have one point of contact for the patient so that one door, they come in one door, and any questions that they have with regards to system navigation or how to work through the health system, uh, they would be able to answer. There's a number of research papers. Sarah has uh, completed one that we're using as a basis right now. 
We've done some uh, engagement sessions with physicians to identify what they see as being the needs. And through the community consultation right now, we're also undertaking some uh, further uh, research. I understand that there was a presentation made recently at Gray County, and I understand that another one was made at, uh, at Bruce County. So I think uh, that's probably where I'll end. Uh, you have the deck to be able to refer to, and I'm happy to take and answer any questions that you might have. Well, thank you very much, uh, Alden Madden. This has uh, been a, a very interesting and, and comprehensive presentation as well, even though there wasn't the slide deck. Uh, yeah. Very, uh, uh, quite a bit of information to, uh, to digest there. Members of council, questions? I see three members of council that wish to speak, beginning with Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and thank you, Mr. Madden, for the presentation today. Pleasure. Could you um, explain the difference of, between the Lynn system and um, this new system? And is this new system replacing the Lynn system? If you could just catch me up on that detail, please. Thank sure. You. It, it's a very good question. Thank you for your question, Councillor Hamilton. Uh, so the Lynn system right now is a centralized uh, regional model uh, that operates out of Southwest Ontario. Uh, and really, Grey Bruce doesn't have the autonomy um, and the ability to make local decisions around funding. Mm -hmm. So the difference is that we would have the Grey Bruce Ontario Health Team would have that autonomy. So I'm going to throw a number out that could be accurate or it could be off by 10 or 15 percent. If we receive 260 or 280 million dollars a year in healthcare funding, we would have the ability to be able to move money around within that budget to where we see the greatest need. Um, and so, and we would all be held accountable with an integrated balance scorecard. So it does replace the LIN. Um, the LINs will be redundant once the Ontario health teams are up and running. Um, and it does create a, a, a sense of local autonomy with regards to Gray Bruce that gives us some authority over how that money can be spent. Great, thank you. I have one more question if I may. Sure. Um, Will there still be some care that's received outside of our area? So for example, cancer yeah. care or that kind of thing, and how will that be managed? Absolutely, very good question, thank you. Um, so there, there will always be specialist care that uh, will exist in, in London. There will be referrals uh, to those sites. Also uh, specialist care that will uh, be delivered by South, uh, South Lake Hospital if it's cardiac, or it could be delivered um, in, in Toronto directly. And we would have relationships with all of those centers such that we would be able to refer and have that care paid for out of our budget as well. Wonderful. I'm, I might follow up with you if I may, um, following uh, in the week to come. I sure. sit, I, I represent uh, West Gray on the Saugeen Mobility and Regional Transit Board. And through Saugeen Mobility, we do um, transportation for, for, for um, those who have accessibility needs. Right. We, we are driving, um, citizens outside of our area to receive care. Um, and so that would be some transportation. How, how do we connect uh, people with accessibility needs, but also people who perhaps can't afford to, to make that trip as well outside of our area? Be a couple of concerns, but perhaps we could have a conversation um, late, later this month. By all means. And the information is on our website. If you, if you go there, you can, my contact information is there. Happy to talk to you. Okay. I look forward to that. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson here. Um, thanks, Alan, for the presentation. Um, just wanted to um, um, highlight a couple um, points, and I don't know whether these fall into your jurisdiction or not, but um, one that uh, there's been some work on in the past had to do with uh, patient records um, integration or, or transparency across between doctors and uh, uh, boards and so on. Are you involved in that or is that strictly at a, a ministry level? No, it's a very good question. Um, Councillor Hutchinson, thank you. Um, so one of the areas that uh, is evident in the application is that we have to develop a digital health strategy. Um, and so we've got a number of individuals who would be working specifically on how we could identify and put together one medical record as opposed to the fractured system that exists today. Let me give you a further example, please. Uh, recently, we've uh, struck a, an agreement with Chapman House. Um, and what we, what we are proposing is that we will share our electronic medical record with Chapman House, who currently don't have a system. Practice Solutions is used by most of the family health teams within Grand Bruce. 
But let me tell you the, the benefit to our patients. We have about 9,000 patients at Southeast Cray. And what that means is that when our office closes at seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, all of those 9,000 patients will have access to a primary care provider at Chapman House. So Mrs. Smith can call in and say, I'm not feeling well. Um, I want to book an appointment tomorrow. They would speak to a, 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 a nurse, uh, a live body. They would speak to a person. That nurse can pull up their file and have a look at their medical record and say, you know what? I'm going to book you an appointment tomorrow to see one of our doctors or one of our nurse practitioners, or I'm going to refer you to the hospital. And they would call the hospital and say, this person's coming. So there, there are the advantages of having integrated medical records. And we're just touching the, the, the beginning right now. The other thing that we want to do, Councillor Hutchison, is we want to make our medical records available as part of the family of, of health experts to the hospitals. So if one of our patients shows at a hospital, the hospital can pull up that patient's file. So we're working on that behind the scenes right now, but we do have to develop a digital health uh, strategy as part of the application. Yeah, I think nowadays it's really important that, uh, you know, with the capabilities that we have of digital um, records that it should be it should be a no brainer really when you think about that we should be able to access this data across the board so that, that's great if you're working on that two other items that I just wanted to uh, touch base on and one is um, where where are we in uh, with the ambulance the paramedics are going in to do home visits I know there's I think Gray County received some funding for that are we is that a big part of your what you're looking at absolutely the paramedics uh, sit on the planning committee with us. So they'll be a big part of helping us develop that frail senior strategy. And we'll be able to integrate the services that we deliver along with the services that the paramedics deliver as well. So that you don't have five different people knocking at the door of the same individual. Yeah, that's great. Okay, They're doing great one work. Of, yeah, and for sure, I think that's an important program. And the other one um, I'm having to do, and it has to do with COVID, I think is because COVID has driven a lot of uh, home visits where people are calling into their local doctors. I think that's something that I would hope that we continue to, um, reinforce and, and use in the future. It just, it means, it means so much uh, accessibility, I think is really what it's all about. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you hundred percent. And we just surveyed our patients and our patients actually, um, we had a 95% approval rating on patients wanting to be contacted at home by a physician or a nurse practitioner to undergo a virtual visit. So they do seem to be enjoying it and we will continue to keep that practice up. Okay, great. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Pleasure. Councillor Townsend. Well, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, two questions for you, Alan. Um, sure. The first one is on page 18 of your slide deck, just for reference others, um, you list different um, goals that you have for improving uh, the service, right? And they yes, all yes. seem to be shifting the service to a different model, but from experience of being on the hospital boards and that, I know that that in fact will reduce the cost at hospitals. It'll be more cost effective. So there will be some savings there, right? Uh, yes. Assuming you're successful. Yes. So on that premise with the limb going away, there'll also be some savings there. So I'm not sure whether you have a commitment for more funding from the province, um, but I'm hoping that first of all, from the funding of getting rid of the limb will be um, not significant when you break it down to the different health teams, but it'll be more. And I'm wondering, is there more commitment from the province to fund this model and improve the care? So the commitment that we do have is any savings that we're able to generate as a result of uh, coming together and integrating our services, any savings we're, we're able to uh, generate, we can reinvest back into the health system. And uh, I, I don't know if anybody follows uh, Ted Ball on LinkedIn or any of those, but some of those experts believe that there's 10% uh, floating around out there that that's uh, waiting to be reinvested. As you pointed out, uh, Councillor Townsend, there could be some money that uh, that could come from a reduction in the number of, of LIN staff and, and bureaucrats who are currently servicing us in London at this point in time. That remains to be seen, but we do think that uh, by putting our heads together, we can deliver a, a better uh, quality of health care and any costs that are identified, we can invest back into the system as well. Super, glad to hear that because I know there's lots there. Um, Absolutely. I, did, I hadn't heard the 10% before, but I hope it's that and more to be honest. <laughs> Me too. Uh, the second one has to do with, you go to one budget and as a, as a group, as a team, you're gonna decide sort of where the money gets spent. Where does that leave the, um, the hospital foundations 
that are fundraising that don't necessarily know in advance what's going to be done. And normally they start well in advance because of the time it takes to raise the funds and you want as much as you can have before the project starts. And I know when I asked Mike Barrett that about a year ago, there was no way anyone had an answer to that yet. Are you any closer to an answer for that? I don't think so, Councillor Townsend. I think that uh, uh, acute care is um, is a very costly way to deliver health care. Um, and I think that if we can assist them in reducing their operation cost by taking on some of the responsibility for increasing access to care, so patients don't have to go to the emergency room to receive care, they would be able to uh, reinvest those, those savings as well. So I don't know if the hospitals are any closer. Um, certainly, um, I would think that as the OHT develops and becomes mature, they would have strategies around the, um, the role of the foundations in future and uh, future fund fundraising. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. Councillor Shea, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Madden. Um, so in this new model, would the, uh, for example, the uh, Durham doctors health team fall yes. under the purview of this, of this administration? Yes, they would. Because well, my understanding is that they work with a uh, legacy model of uh, the health team um, arrangement uh, that's a little bit anomalous and outside of the norm, um, but they would they would be uh, managed by by this new arrangement. They would be they would be part of the Ontario health team. All of the physicians within Grand Bruce would have to sign on and become part of that. Uh, so they would also be held accountable by an integrated uh, balanced scorecard. Um, but Councillor Shea, to your point, um, we're we're really hopeful that enabling legislation is going to occur over time. It's going to change some of those compensation models and also change the way home care is delivered as well. So uh, we're just catching up now. I think the ministry is just catching up with some of that legislation. Um, I did sit on the Premier's Council uh, to eliminate hallway health care. Uh, and it was on the primary care group. And there were a number of physicians who were uh, suggesting exactly what you're suggesting now. And it was time to review the different compensation models for a lot of the family health teams, the FOs, the FIGs, the CHCs, so that it, it uh, not only rewarded physicians, but also held them accountable to uh, certain medical standards. Okay, okay, I look forward to that. Thank you. Pleasure. Councillor Herger. Yes, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Madden. I was curious about the online survey that is going on right now. Could you speak to that, please? Sure. Um, so there's a survey available on our website right now. We would love for you to share it or, or link to it as well. Uh, we'd be happy to make those connections with your clerk, um, your worship. Um, and so it's an online survey. We're gathering data right now. The Ontario Health Team is gathering data. That will go in and that will assist us in developing some of the targets that we're going to have uh, it, not only in our first year, but in the, in the other years as well. So we're anxious to hear from residents of Gray and Bruce uh, to uh, define what they think our priority should be in the, in the first couple of years. And I note the quick timeline on this. It's November 19th is this initial survey. Are, will there be additional ones or is this the, the moment for people to engage? I think this is the beginning. Um, once we're established and once the Ontario Health Team is up and running, I would suspect that we're going to reach out to the community uh, annually uh, to try to find out exactly what their concerns are and how we can improve healthcare. Okay, thank you. I know this is a, a very important topic in our community because we have some hospitals on the periphery of our municipality and I appreciate that you're working and engaging with those uh, hospitals as well. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, pleasure. Well, Alan, we would very much appreciate that uh, link to the survey. So I, sure. I note that our, our clerk, um, had just uh, made a note, uh, so I know that she will, uh, Clerk Sharbat will be in uh, connection with you on that. So thank you for that offer. Um, I am not seeing any other member of council with their hand up, uh, which would represent uh, any further questions. But I do want to say again, um, Alan, that was a, a really interesting presentation. A lot of information to uh, to absorb, and certainly it's it's. Um, information that we could utilize as a foundation or a baseline right now. And uh, we would certainly like uh, to welcome you back again um, to give us an update uh, for uh, another delegation time. 
So we will absolutely uh, connect with you on that and very much appreciate your time this evening. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, members of council. Have a great evening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the motion at hand, which was moved by Councillor Herger, seconded by Councillor Hutchinson. Through you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that council receives the delegation by Alan Madden, CEO, Southeast Gray Community Health Center regarding the Gray Bruce Ontario Health Team Development. Members of council indicate um, support for this motion with a check mark. If you're not supportive of it, utilize the check mark or the X mark rather. To begin, uh, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. That motion carried. Have a good night, folks. Thank you. Thank you again, Alan. Okay, we are now moving on to item 4.3. Uh, Stephanie Stewart, Manager of Community Transportation, Gray County, regarding Gray Transit Route. Um, welcome, Stephanie. But before we um, hear your presentation, Clerk Sharbach, could you read the motion or uh, read the recommendation? Thank you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council receives the delegation of Stephanie Stewart, Manager of Community Transportation, Gray County, regarding the Gray Transit Route. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I move the motion. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm seconding the motion. Thank you for that. And now we'll hear the presentation from Stephanie Stewart. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, West Great Council. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, your, uh, your audio is just fine. Perfect, wonderful. So thank you so much for having me tonight. It's a pleasure to be back as always. Um, so prior to starting my presentation, I'm just, or going over what has happened and where we are today, I think it's important to go back in history and understand how we got to where we are. So in July of 2019, Gray County um, received funding from the province of Ontario in the amount of $1.8 million to fund transportation in, this, in the region of Gray County, going from Owen Sound to Markdale, Owen Sound to Blue Mountain and Owen Sound to Wyerton with a support for a launch pad. Additionally, Southgate received $500,000 to support transportation going from Dundalk to Orangeville. As you can see, Gray Road 4 is not included in this route or in the grant funding together. So um, County Council happened and Mayor Robinson um, advocated on behalf of West Gray and the communities along Gray Road 4 to advocate to say that Gray Road 4 should be included in the pilot project. Her advocation was successful and many of the county councillors agreed with her and were, it was included in the project. So uh, Gray Road 4 is being funded currently by Gray County and it will be funded until 2023. So this uh, Gray Road 4 route will be running alongside all of the other routes um, that are supported by the grant. In March of 2020, prior to COVID happening, um, we had a very different plan as to what transportation was going to look like in Gray County. We had anticipated the leasing of vehicles, six vehicles to be exact, fully accessible wheelchair lifted um, vehicles. And we were going to contract the service, uh, the driving over to first student. As a result of COVID, that plan was put on hold and we decided to wait and listen to what our residents were saying and feeling. We knew that transportation was going to be a new initiative for many residents, and we wanted to make sure we took it slow and that we didn't do it wrong. So we waited to hear what they were saying, and we started to hear the feedback that people were more concerned with the lack of uh, transportation and the effects and the barriers that not having access to transportation were having on their lives um, more than COVID. Um, we are very fortunate in Gray and Bruce County that we haven't been hit by COVID the same way as other areas. And so people were less concerned about COVID and more wanting access to transportation. So I came back to County Council in July and I presented a new plan, working with a local partner 
um, a driver's seat, one of our local franchises in Owen Sound, to deliver a service that we could have up and running by the beginning of middle of September, um, operating in all of our area, all of our communities by the beginning of October. Um, that plan was accepted by County Council and it was implemented starting September 14th. We are operating currently, we've been up and running for almost two months now um, and on all of the routes and we are operating from Owen Sound to Orangeville five days a week, Monday to Friday. Owen Sound to the town of Blue Mountain, Wednesday to Sunday, five days a week. Owen Sound to Wyerton, three days a week, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, Launchpad was supporting them based on the program needs and when kids are signing up for programs. So that one's kind of sporadic. And then we are supporting Gray Road 4 on Mondays and Fridays. Um, at this time, our vehicles are not wheelchair accessible. However, they are accessible in the sense that if an individual is able to um, get out of their mobility device, uh, whether it be a walker um, or if they have canes, for example, they and they're able to take a step into a vehicle, we are able to store their device in the back of the van um, as there is some storage capacity there. So I do encourage anybody who has any questions or thoughts of whether they are able to use the service to give our, um, our phone number a call and then that way they can ask any questions. But on that note, we are in partnership with our existing agencies that offer accessible tran transportation. So we are talking to the, the current partners that exist in Gray County. And we are looking at um, running a parallel service alongside our Gray Transit route. So what that means is it's not an additional specialized transit. It still is conventional transit. But what it will provide is individuals who are in um, mobility devices that they cannot get out of or require a full lift to get into the vehicle, um, they will be able to access uh, transportation. So I'm hoping to have that implemented, um, hopefully fingers crossed for the new year. I will be taking a report to County Council um, December 10th, I believe, to uh, provide an update on costing um, and different models. So on September, um, Nope, I forget what day. In September, I brought a report to Council, uh, County Council, which provided them with an update on how much it would cost to flip our current vehicles to larger vehicles that also included accessible seating involved. Um, so that has been presented to County Council as well, and I will circle back to that, those pricing um, when I bring forward our partnership opportunity in December, just to show the comparison of what a parallel service would look like as opposed to um, a, a full service where the vehicles are fully accessible and we wouldn't be running a parallel service, if that makes sense. Um, in addition to that, we've been taking lots of lots of um, opportunities to listen and learn from our, our riders. And we are um, hoping to make some schedule changes in the very near future to make the service more meaningful for individuals, having more connections um, for residents in along Great Road Ford to connect into Flesherton so they can travel to Orangeville more often or go up to Owen Sound more often. So we're trying to make the connections more meaningful. We're also trying to make it so that way there's more opportunities for people to travel back and forth, so more trips in a day. So all of those things, we're, we're actively listening and learning. We're trying to make the changes as fast as we can. Um, it's a tricky balance of making the changes too quick um, because people are relying on a service um, before, but you also don't want to wait too long because you don't want to lose the interest in people. So your service has been up and running um, for the month of October. It was running for eight days. And um, we did have a total of four people use the service so far. So that's, um, to me, that's pretty good. That means that people know that the service is there. Um, people are interested in it. Our ridership numbers will be interesting to see what happens come November 1st, because then people have to pay a fee to use the service. So we'll be watching our ridership numbers very closely just to monitor them um, and understand what the actual needs are and where people are wanting to use it. Um, in addition to that, I will be doing some bigger marketing pushes. Uh, I was off for a few weeks, but now I'm back. So I'll be doing some bigger marketing pushes and I will be boots on the ground, um, hitting the streets with um, information and posters, um, just trying to make sure that everybody knows about it and uh, visible and aware. Um, I think that's all I have for right now. Are there any questions from County, uh, from West Gray Council? Well, thank you, Stephanie Stewart. Um, this was a very detailed presentation. Um, this is an exciting and worthwhile initiative that um, overall assists our local and uh, Gray County residents and uh, businesses. 
Um, I will say that uh, when you are doing your um, your marketing, uh, certainly uh, connect with uh, communications at West Gray. Uh, we can mm -hmm. uh, get the word out. I think that's uh, most important uh, through our, our communication vehicles here at uh, West Gray and certainly through uh, Madam CIO. I think that uh, connection uh, can be made uh, quite seamlessly. Um, so with that, I'm going to go to Councillor Hamilton for the first question, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you, Manager Stewart. Really great to hear your voice again. <laughs> um, I just wanted to check in about, I remember at one point, um, you there was an idea to have point to point service where there'd be a way to get people from their location, their home location, perhaps to the main lines. Is that something that's still in progress? Uh, Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, through your worship. Yes, that is still something that's in process, but it's just going to look a little different. So as a result, the grant funds the main corridors, um, but yes, the point to point that I'm looking to get, it will require me to do a vehicle for hire bylaw, um, which will take a quite um, a lot of work, to be honest, um, because I will have to get a triple majority most likely. So there's a lot of legal work that I need to do behind the scenes. Um, but for your knowledge, I am working with uh, Dufferin County and Bruce County and the town of Orangeville specifically to try to offer that seamless service. So the three places, four if you can't include Orangeville, um, we are all working to write a bylaw together. So that way, when we are able to allow vehicles for hire, so whether that be Uber or Lyft or whoever else comes into the businesses of the world, um, whoever comes into the market will be allowed to enter into the market. And then that way, a resident can travel seamlessly from Orangeville or wherever they would like to travel in an Uber, in a Lyft, all throughout Gray County, all throughout Bruce, all throughout Dufferin. That's what we're trying to go for and achieve. Um, so I'm gonna focus strictly on Gray and then my partners in Bruce and Dufferin are focusing on their areas, but we're working to write one collaborative bylaw to try to make that point to point um, happen sooner rather than later. That's great to hear the col collaboration because as you know, we travel beyond our borders. So I'm really glad to hear that and look forward to hearing how you make out. And then just wondering about the accessibility piece and looking at transit through that lens. Um, uh, how would accessibility be addressed through that kind of a point-to-point -point service? Through you, your worship, that's a great question. Um, it would be interesting. So the, I don't believe the legislation is the same for point-to-point, -point, but I would have to look into the legislation because obviously if we're bringing someone from their home to um, our service, we would want to like be able to get them there and, and make sure that they can travel. Um, perhaps if somebody had an accessible um, uh, an accessible need that we wanted to meet, um, we could work with our partners like Foggy Mobility and HCSS and have them facilitate the bringing the person from their home to the main corridor, if that would be of benefit. Um, I am working with HCSS and I know I was um, planned to come to the smart board, but then COVID happened. So I do need to get back to the smart board um, because I do know that um, the manager wanted to reach out to me to talk about how we could make those connections um, for individuals who may have accessible accessibility needs. Oh, fantastic. I welcome you to the board. I look forward to, to talking more with you there. Thank you very much, manager. You're welcome. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, it's Councillor Hutchinson here, Ms. Stewart. Um, just a couple of questions about the, uh, I'm just curious about the stats uh, that you had. You mentioned something about the, the Gray Road 4-1. You said that uh, I think it's been running eight days. That would, that's, that's Monday, Fridays, right? And that is correct, you, yeah. And you had how many users, you said? Uh, for the month of October, four. Four users, right. Do we know, do you know by any chance what the purpose, like I'm thinking that some of the people are they using it for job related or is it just getting to town and back again sort of thing? Uh, through your worship, that's a really interesting question also, Councillor Hutchison, because um, what we thought was going to happen with transportation pre-COVID versus what's happening now is completely different. So prior to even the way we wrote the grant, um, we had anticipated a lot of people using transportation for employment and to get to post-secondary education. 
Now that's not the case because a lot of employers are allowing employees to work virtually. Um, unfortunately, some businesses have had to shut down, so the need for employer employees is not as high. And I've also heard that some employers are actually discouraging public transportation because they want to reduce contact um, with other people and that you're increasing your bubble, right? Um, so that is a concern for some employers. So that could be why we're not seeing as many people use it for employment like we anticipated. Um, and also for schooling, um, not so much for Gray Road 4, but along the Highway 26 corridor, Georgian College is now very virtual. Um, so the, the students aren't traveling the same way. So to answer your question, the individuals that are currently riding on our service are not really for using it for employment. Um, we are going to begin uh, specifically, you know, profiling riders along the different routes to get a better sense. Um, but I do have the information and I can provide more details. Um, I have provided your CAO with the statistics um, and I do plan on adding them, uh, updating them monthly, sorry, but I can provide where people are getting on and off. Um, so you can see kind of where their travel patterns are um, and where each unique rider is traveling because that might help show you kind of what their needs are. So I can work on that and provide that detail to um, your CAO if that's of benefit. Yeah, and, and that was my concern when I first heard this is that, you know, it's great to have a transit program, but unfortunately because of COVID, uh, we're hitting it at a, you know, a, a terrible time sort of thing. And uh, um, I think the stats, I think our usage is going to be lower than what we would hope for. And therefore, when it comes time for future funding, uh, people are gonna look at it and say, you know, well, it didn't really get used to, to what it should get used. And so it's not a fair, uh, fair uh, example, I think, uh, based on what's happening right now. Uh, through your worship, yes, that is very true. And so I'm, I'm fortunate because I am part of other boards. So I'm working with uh, the Southwest Community Transit Initiative. And that's made up of a lot of different uh, counties across all of Ontario. Um, so Perth, Norfolk, so um, great counties in there, a lot of different places are in there. So what we're trying to do is come together as a collaborative loud voice. So that way when our funding runs out in 2023, we can stand proudly in front of the province and let them know that this is valid, valid and needed and that our residents, whether they are in Gray County or Perth or Norfolk, they need it. Um, so we are trying to come together because we do realize that our ridership statistics are going to take a hit as a result of COVID. Um, and to be honest, this is transportation in Gray County is a tough thing in general. Um, transportation is new for many people. The concept of traveling with others is something that many people are just not used to. Um, many people in Gray County often have vehicles. So um, transportation was going to be something that I would have had to work through, um, teaching people how to use it. In general, uh, adding COVID onto it has kind of made it more difficult. At County Council, I had presented the concept uh, pre-COVID of having, you know, you could have bring a buddy on the bus if it was your first time. So for seniors, um, if that was a challenge for them or they just weren't comfortable and trying to reduce those overwhelming feelings of transit. And all of those things that I wanted to do are just challenging to do in a world of COVID because now you're putting more people in vulnerable situations that don't necessarily need to be there. Um, so hopefully once COVID calms down a little bit, we'll be able to pump it up again um, and get more people using the service and feeling more comfortable with it. Okay, yeah, I agree. Uh, one other, just another comment. Um, when you mentioned about a parallel transit, uh, I think you were talking Gray Road 4, uh, correct? Um, uh, my, my suggestion would be, uh, why, not, why not look at SMART uh, as even providing that service, if nothing else, uh, because they have the vehicles um, that they could run a parallel service if there was a need for it. So that would be my suggestion. And I'm sure you're going to talk to the smart board and uh, uh, Councillor Hamilton will probably talk to you more about that in the future. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Mm. Anything further, Councillor Hutchinson? No, that's it for me. Thank oh, you. Okay, very good questions. Um, Councillor Shea, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, and, and welcome back, Stephanie. Nice to see you, hear you. Um, so the principle of inclusive design is that uh, when we're thinking about uh, aspects of our community that have special needs, that we do not uh, design for their special needs as an afterthought, but that we design for their needs um, at the very, very preliminary stages. I'm very surprised that uh, we're implementing a public uh, transportation system that does not automatically include accessibility. I was surprised and disappointed. 
I thought the AODA actually mandated that municipalities that run uh, municipal uh, uh, transit systems must be accessible. Um, and so, and, and I note that on your website, uh, you say that fully accessible transportation is not currently available, but will be available soon. So this idea of creating a parallel system that will support uh, our special needs communities seems like entirely the wrong way to be going about this. I'm, I'm going to ask you, uh, so I sit on our local accessibility advisory committee here in West Gray, um, and we have uh, uh, prepared a resolution to council, which council accepted, which was that we want to encourage that all of these routes be fully accessible. But I'm, I wanted to ask if you are working with the uh, Gray County um, I, I forget if it's a collaborative or collective um, accessibility committee there to ensure that this service is properly instituted. Uh, through your worship, yes, Councillor Shea, I am working with our Gray County Accessibility Committee, and I was recently at uh, Meaford's Accessibility Committee as well, um, addressing their concerns, similar to your concerns, and I do apologize for the lack of inclusive design. Um, I really can't do much more than apologize for that, and, um, and please know that we are working diligently to um, ensure that we have accessible options. Thanks for, your, thanks for your concern. Uh, I'll just continue to express my uh, disappointment, but thank you. Okay, Ke Okay. thank you very much, Councillor Shea. Um, I'm going to go to um, Councillor Hergert as a first time speaker, but I do note that Councillor Hamilton still has her hand up. Uh, so perhaps there's additional questions for her. Uh, no, all right, well, thank you very much. Uh, now, Councillor Hergert, please. Yes, thank you, Stephanie, uh, Ms. Stewart, for the presentation. I know that connectivity throughout Gray Bruce is a challenge, but you know, connectivity is very different, you know, now than it was in March. I think March we were thinking public transit. Now we're high-speed internet. Everybody has to have it. So I appreciate that uh, the goal is changing for you. Um, also, to the point, uh, Councillor Shea made several very good points. I'm thinking specifically about the pickup locations um, along the transit route and whether those are accessible or not. Uh, through your worship, thank you, Councillor Herger. For the most part, they are accessible. Um, and some of the, to be honest, some of these stops are going to be challenging um, because they are in rural locations. Um, so, for example, we do have some locations that are in rather um, remote areas that you may have to stand um, where there is no shelter um, while you are waiting for the bus. So to be to be open and transparent, um, it, there could be, you know, if there was a big snowstorm, we have it built into our bus stop agreements that the snow needs to be removed and all those kinds of things and that we have done as best as we can. Um, but if I am being open and trans transparent, if we get hit with a huge snowstorm, there could be some challenges. And that's not that's not specific to Gray County. That is that is something that happens in, in Canada, Ontario. Um, I have been an avid public transit user and sometimes the, my stop just had, wasn't shoveled on time. Um, but that being said, yes, we are able to drop people off um, very near to the front door or where the an accessible stop is that we will ensure that that's not an issue. Um, but that is something to highlight. And I wanna make um, individuals aware that this is not specialized transit. So individuals do have to get to the bus stop. Um, and when they get off the bus at their destination, they need to be able to travel independently. Um, they, if they need someone to pick them up from their home and assist them while they're um, at their appointment or um, you know, getting from the bus stop now to their appointment, unfortunately, our system is not set up for that. So our system is set up for someone to be independent once they get off of the bus. So I just want to make sure that people know um, what the differences are because they are very different. And so will that be part of your uh, marketing push is that you advise uh, people how, how much um, assistance or how, how much we do for the service? Would that be part of the, um, the marketing strategy moving forward? Yes, through your worship. 
Um, yes, that is that is the plan. So we are going to be kind of fielding those calls, right? So we'll be hearing um, from the person and so they'll tell us, oh, I'd like to travel from here to here. And our um, staff, when they answer that call, they'll say, oh, okay, well, tell me more about your needs. Um, tell me a little bit more about your wheelchair size because we have to have all those details in order to make sure that we send the right vehicle so that it fits. Um, and if they say, you know, through that dialogue, and if they say, oh, I'd like the, to be dropped off at my appointment, or I'd like to be picked up at home, um, then our staff will advise them of the options that do exist in, in Gray or Bruce County, um, just to make sure that they are set up for success. And then my final question would just be about the metrics. So if we, we have the metrics for October, I wouldn't necessarily expect metrics every month. We want to see the service growing, but is there some sort of quarterly report that would come back to West Gray Council, or uh, another metric that I almost want to have captured is how many people could, how many people asked for service that we couldn't provide that service. And that might help us as council to know is still our only option, or if we should uh, somewhat rely that you're going to partner with SMART. How will we fill the need without uh, being too du duplicative? I mean, I believe that when we started the Gray County Transit, it was because there was eight or nine services and we were duplicating over top of that. But we had a grant and, and you know, that's noble that we had a grant. How are we over the next two years going to streamline all of these services so that we have one fully operational transit system that is accessible for everyone? You know, there's the, uh, the picture that says a thousand words and the picture is let's clear the ramp before we clear the stairs. If we clear the ramp, we can get everybody in, right? If we clear the stairs and then the ramp, we're, we're just prioritizing differently, but it really sends a very loud message. So I just wanna know how over the next two years do you see that we would be streamlining the several services of transit, Gray? Uh, through your worship, thank you, Councillor Herker. So, um, in regards to your first point about asking for service but being turned away, we are keeping those notes. So we are able to track that right now. We have that data of how many people we have turned away. We do have the amount of calls that we've received for accessible transit, and we are promoting and encouraging people to um, find uh, the avenues that they have in their neighborhoods. And anybody who hasn't been able to find the solution, we are working with them. Like I've gotten on the phone and I've talked to who they would need to talk to. Um, we're making sure that nobody is left without uh, support. Um, but in regards to your second question about what are we gonna do over the next two years? So that's a huge question. Um, and that's something that I can't necessarily answer tonight for you um, because that is a question that's bigger than me. Um, that is a question that I will need to work with uh, Kim Wingrove, um, at the county with and, and work with all of our partners because um, I hear you. I do agree that it is something that is needed in, in Gray County. Um, there is duplication currently and there is some confusion. And unfortunately, we have people that are falling through the cracks because um, they don't qualify for this or they don't qualify for that and then they get excluded. So we do know that that is happening. Um, but at this time, I am focused specifically on the Gray Transit Project and trying to make sure that is a success. But I'm not turning a blind eye to all of the other things that need um, work as well. Um, but I, I just haven't been given direction to take on all of the transit of Gray County yet. Okay, I guess I do have one last question. Is there an overlay of um, like Google mapping or something that if, if someone types in, I want to go from uh, Hanover, from Durham over to Markdale, would it include the transit service for Gray County that, that you work on? Would it, would it include that service? Uh, through your worship. At this time, no. Um, I just I have to work with our staff, um, and I need to work with Google, and I need to convert our data into the right format. At this time, too, because we're still making schedule changes, and I and we were waiting to see what the first two, two months were of uptake. Um, I wouldn't want to do that quite yet, but in the future, that is my plan: is to have that overlay so that when someone logs on to goes on to Google and says, "I want to travel," they see all the options. So, yeah, that's where we want to get to. And pardon me, metrics, how often would we see a report like to our, our, to our lowest year? My apologies. Um, every month I will be updating the, the numbers. So your CAO will have that information monthly and, and um, I'm happy to share that link with everybody. Um, so you can log on at any point and see what the information is. Uh, 
or I can send that as a PDF. But I'm, I'm happy to come back as often as you would like, but I'm prepared to do a quarterly report. I've committed to going back to County Council in January with uh, an, a fully updated report as to where we are. I'll be going back in December with a report about accessibility. Um, but yes, I will forward the, the most up-to-date reports as I can to um, West Great Council. Thanks very much, Ms. Stewart. Councillor Hamilton, you do have a, a supplementary question. Please go ahead. I do. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, one last question, um, Manager Stewart. Um, um, if, a, if a client calls and they can't be served by uh, Gray County, I believe the website says points them towards SMART or towards um, the other service that's available in their community. Is Gray County then um, paying for that service for that individual or how's that piece being handled? Uh, through your worship, um, so we haven't we haven't had that happen yet. Um, that anybody, so that hasn't happened yet. But what our plan is um, is that because of fair parity, the individual will pay their their same fare as everybody else. So their five dollars or their four fifty if they're a senior. Um, and yes, at this time, Gray County would need to um, pay that difference. And I will be um, tracking any of that difference and making sure that I come back to County Council with that information, because at this time that is um, funds that we wanna make sure we don't let go too far because it's very important to, while you're operating a parallel service to be very aware of what the true cost is because if it's cheaper, not cheaper, that's not the appropriate word. Um, if it's more cost efficient and effective and better for users to be making our vehicles fully accessible, then that's the transition we need to be making. So we're gonna be keeping an eye on the data very closely um, to monitor it because we wanna make those changes as fast as we can and make the switch to a fully inclusive system um, as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. I, I'm pleased to hear that, um, the, that that client would be paying the same fare as an able-bodied uh, client. So thank you for that clarity. And I look forward to more conversations at the smart board table. Thank you so much. For sure, thank you. I am not seeing any other questions of council. I'm just looking again at the dashboard. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Stephanie Stewart. Um, I always appreciate you uh, coming to West Gray Council as a delegation and speaking to us about transit here in uh, Gray County and, uh, and West Gray proper. Uh, we would very much appreciate if you would uh, come back as a delegation and, and provide an update and we will all look forward to your December 10th uh, County Council report. So well done, um, Stephanie, on this initiative, uh, uh, extremely well done. And uh, we will speak with you after. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Members of council, uh, we are now dealing with the motion at hand, which is moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Townsend. Clerk Sharbeck, would you please read the um, motion at hand? Thank you, Thank you, Your Worship. The motion is that council receives the delegation of Stephanie Stewart, Manager of Community Transportation, Gray County, regarding the Gray Transit Route. Thank you. All those in favor, please indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christy Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. We are now moving on to item five closed session for this particular agenda that is an NA. Um, before I go any further, I'm just reminding members of council to clean their, uh, clear their dashboard, and I'm reminding myself as well. Okay. Um, item six matters arising from the closed session, NA. Public uh, meetings on item seven, NA for this particular agenda, confirmed by our clerk. Item eight, we are now on uh, comment period. 
Supervisor Hewlett, could you please uh, run through the particulars with regard to this item and also advise if there's anyone that wishes a comment at this time. Absolutely, and thank you, Mayor Robinson. Um, previous to this meeting, we did not receive any correspondence uh, for members of the public wishing to comment. However, any members of the public wishing to comment at this time may do so in a variety of ways. The first would be um, orally, which they could do by raising their hand. If you have joined us on the online meeting software, you can raise your hand by clicking the blue hand usually located in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Alternatively, if you've joined us over the phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine and to lower your hand would be the same, uh, star nine. Alternatively, you can also send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor. Just taking a quick review of the dashboard, Madam Mayor, I am not seeing any members of the public wishing to comment, nor have I received any uh, correspondence through the chat. Okay, well, thank you very much. So with that, I'm also looking at the dashboard here. Uh, with that, we will then move on to item nine, adoption of minutes. Uh, we have a, a fair number of them, beginning with um, item 9.1, November 3rd, 2020 council meeting, 9.2, November 3rd, public meeting, a zoning amendment, 9.3, November 9th, 2020 special council meeting. Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the motion, a recommendation rather? Thank you to you, your worship. The recommendation is that council hereby adopts the council minutes of the November 3rd, 2020 council meeting, um, the November 3rd, 2020 public meeting, and the November 9th special council meeting. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving the motion? This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I will move the motion. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm seconding the motion. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend in favor. That motion has been carried. Item 9.4, October 27th, 2020, Committee of the Whole Meeting. Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the motion, a recommendation? Thank you, through your worship. The recommendation is that Council hereby adopts the Committee of the Whole Minutes and the recommendations contained therein of October 27th, 2020. I will um, look for a mover and seconder, and then I'll go to questions. As indicated, there is a question. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Shea, are you moving the motion? Councillor Shea, I move the motion. Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend, you have a question or comment? Uh, yes, I do, thank you. Um, I wanted to um, discuss uh, one of the resolutions in the minutes, and I wasn't sure if we do it now or later before we um, accept them. Um, we can uh, do it right now, but I'm going to have Clerk Sharbeck just explain around that procedure. Clerk thank Sharbeck, you. please. You're welcome, Councillor Townsend. Thank you, that's a good question, Councillor Townsend. If, uh, if council adopts the minutes of a committee, including committee of the whole, it means council is adopting all of the resolutions contained therein. So if there's a resolution in these minutes uh, that you would like to address separately, not at, or prior to the adoption of the minutes, or perhaps there's a recommendation that council doesn't accept, from the committee of the whole. 
if you'd like those recommendations addressed separately, now is definitely the time to do that. And there are, um, on page 67 of the package, so I think that's page three of those minutes, there are a number of recommendations to council. Right, so uh, mm -hmm. just be sure you're you're clear that before you vote on adopting the minutes, you really are voting on adopting all of those recommendations as well. So, Councillor Townsend, is there a particular item that you wish to pull from the minutes for a discussion, change, or clarity? Uh, yes, I do. It's resolution uh, seventy-eight twenty, dealing with the committee of the whole and the uh, three members. <clears throat> so our, uh, what is I it that you have to do with that? Uh, part, I'm sorry for um, uh, speaking when you're speaking. Go ahead. Uh, what I was gonna say is we can either discuss it right now, but pull it and deal with it separately, I think is the cleanest way to do it. Clerk Sherbeck, what is the preference here? This is dealing with the, um, it's item or resolution 7820. So that is dealing with the committee of adjustment with regard to the composition. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And thank you, Councillor Townsend for that question. I would suggest that we do have uh, this motion on the floor, moved and seconded to adopt the minutes and everything contained therein. So this would be um, an amendment would be required, moved and seconded that uh, perhaps add on the end of that, with the exception of Committee of the Whole Resolution 78-20. And then that will pull it out of the approval process to be dealt with afterwards. Okay. Um, but it, great. It, perhaps now, if there is going to be an amendment moved, if there's any of these other recommendations that I would like to be pulled, we can put it all into one amendment, if that's council's wish. Okay, so Councillor Townsend, can, with the, with regard to the motion on the floor, um, the uh, motion is to adopt the minutes, with exception to um, resolution 78-20, uh, and that is in regards to committee of adjustment. Would that be suitable? And then after we deal with the motion at hand, then we can can deal with your uh, consideration for committee of adjustment? Uh, yes, it would, but I'd also okay. like to make a comment on the, um, the procedure we're using because we have changed the procedure and normally these would have been done under the heading of uh, consent agenda and you would be able to pull before you even had a motion. So from a procedural perspective, I'm uh, suggesting that in the future, that's the way we deal with it. Okay, thank you for that comment. Clerk Sharbuck, how, uh, we're dealing with the motion at hand, identifying that it's, uh, there's an uh, exception to a resolution, and then there may be others, uh, then we'll, we'll have the vote, and then we'll deal with any of the amendments. Do you, shall we deal with it accordingly? Or uh, to Councillor Townsend's point, I wonder if you could address that, please. So at this point in time, we have the motion to adopt the minutes and the resolutions therein, um, moved by Council Shea and seconded by Council Hergert. So I have an amendment moved by Councillor Townsend, was my understanding that the amendment add onto this resolution, accept the minutes and recommendations of October 27th, with the exception of uh, Committee of the Whole resolutions. Resolution 78-20 regarding Committee of Adjustment. So that, that's the amendment that would need to be addressed first with a okay. seconder and a vote, and then uh, back to approving the minutes. Um, and I would like to identify if there's any anything else that needs to be right. pulled, so I would do that at this time as well. Oh, okay, Councillor Townsend, on the, on the process. Yeah, that's fine, thank you. Oh, you're quite yep. welcome. Thank you. Okay. so. I'm going to go to Councillor Hergert. Thank you, Is Mayor. Yes, yes, just a clarification on the Committee of the Whole resolution number 81. This mm -hmm. is where Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that committees be listed as an agenda item on each Council agenda. So now that we are resolving it here at Council, I would anticipate future Council agendas 
to have a place for all of our board committee, et cetera, um, just updates. Is that correct? Clerk Sherbeck, please. Thank you, Worship. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, Councillor Hergert. Actually, the listing of all the committees and boards on our agenda, since I think we're at a count of 32 of them now, mm -hmm. Is it council's wish that I list the ones I have minutes for or a report from or every single one of them? Um, if we had um, maybe 10 or less, it's a good opportunity to list all of them. But I'm thinking to list uh, 32 agenda items might be really cumbersome on the agenda, um, but we could list every single one that has minutes or a report. It's council's wish. I guess we should clarify that now before we adopt this. So I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. I believe that the intent was to make space and give an opportunity that if there was any, regardless if we had minutes, regardless if they've just met or they're going to meet this next week, it was that there would be a place on the council agenda to have an update from the members to the rest of council. So I think it was much more um, open-ended, but specific enough that if there is a, a board, a committee, uh, something that our, uh, our community needs based on one of those boards or committees that we would have an opportunity at every council meeting to discuss that. Sure. And so I, I think it was more general in nature. I don't know if we need 32 of them listed, but I think that it, there would be an opportunity for anybody to update the rest of council on their own. Um, yeah. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Herger. Would it be appropriate to list um, the ones I have minutes or a report from and leave an open-ended question at the end of that? Are there any um, that the chair could ask? Are there any other committees or boards um, that would like to report out at this time. Yeah, and, and then it does allow for that opportunity because that was the intent. We were missing that piece for members to be able to speak about the committees they're sitting on. So does yeah. that suit? That does suit me, yes. I agree. I think I think that's a, a great uh, great solution to that. Anything further, Councillor Herger? Uh, not at this time, other than just confirmation that it will be on every future um, council agenda do you okay. worship yep. yes. yes yes and i think um i i don't think there's any need to change that recommendation to council yep. i think the intention is clear now and we'll just go forward with that for our december 1st agenda very good Thank okay you. very good Thanks. i do see councillor shea question or comment councillor uh it's funny how we're going from under reporting to over potentially over reporting. I just wanted to say that uh, Councillor Townsend's uh, uh, amendment would could be a friendly amendment if he wanted to present it that way. I would be open to that. Okay, well, thank you as the um, the mover for that clerk Sharbeck. Um, how are we going to proceed then uh, with the um, the item that uh, Councillor Townsend pulled, which is 78 dash 20. Thank you to your worship. That's a good point. Councillor Shea, I would ask um, if the mover and the seconder of the motion to adopt the Committee of the Whole Minutes are both um, agreeable to adding with the exception of, then I'll just tidy that up okay. in, in the minutes and we'll present the motion as that to be voted on. If so that would be Councillor Shea and Councillor Herger approving that uh, wording change. And if both aren't agreeable, I would say that uh, Councillor Townsend needs a seconder. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Shea, are you okay with the uh, revised wording and your suggestion, obviously, for this friendly amendment? Councillor Shea, yes, I am. Thank you. Councillor Herger, are you fine with the adjusted wording for the motion? Sorry, are you waiting for me? Yeah, are you? Yes. Um, no, I'm I, I'm not okay necessarily. I think if we have a committee of adjustment meeting in the next uh, few weeks, we should have some uh, individuals appointed to that. And I think the friendly amendment may be the appointment of three council members, which is the essence of the resolution. 
that we would appoint them at this uh, at this opportunity? Uh, no, I think um, I think what Councillor Townsend wants to do is have a discussion with regard to that uh, to okay. the motion um, dealing with seventy nine twenty. So that's okay. the reason for pulling okay. it, and then uh, if you are in agreement, then we would call the vote, and then um, right afterwards we'll deal with the. Okay. Uh, the other resolution. So, perfect. Are yeah, you I'll second. Yes, I am. Thank you. Perfect. So, with that, um, Clerk Charbeck, could you please read the motion at hand, and then I will call the vote. Uh, through you, Your Worship, the mm -hmm. recommendation um, moved by Council Shea and seconded by Council Herger is the council hereby adopts the Committee of the Whole minutes and the recommendations contained therein of October 27, 2020, with the exception of Committee of the Whole Resolution, uh, what number is it? 78-20. And that's it. Okay, all those in favor, utilize your check mark. Those opposed, utilize your X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson in favor. So that motion did carry. If you could clear your dashboard, that would be appreciated. Now I am going to go on to Councillor Townsend who has pulled um, resolution 7920 and that is in regards to the committee of the whole, actually committee of adjustment. Please go ahead, Councillor. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Townsend. Um, I had put that motion forward for the three. Um, I had moved it, um, but in retrospect and thinking, I was thinking that perhaps three um, is a little too low. And the reason being is that if one person leaves, can't make it, then you're down to two. So now you have an even number, no longer the odd we're trying to attain. And then you've got a chair that's running the meeting. And so you don't get necessarily the right level of discussion or uh, fairness to the people that are coming in for the committee of adjustment and recognizing committee adjustment is actually making decisions. They don't have to come to council afterwards. I thought in retrospect, three was perhaps a little aggressive. Some of that um, thought behind it for other people voting in favor of that might've been that again, it's cost and maybe we can deal with that. But with the recommendations coming forward from the consulting um, report, consultants report, uh, regarding how council gets compensated, that would be less of an issue. So I would like to put forward that we do at least five people, not three, and put that on the table for discussion. Okay, so you are moving um, a motion, which uh, will be something to the effect that the committee of adjustment be comprised of five members of council? Is the same motion that, um, was put forward by the committee of the whole, except instead of the number three, the number five. Right, okay. Clerk Sherbeck, is that fine yeah. for the wording of the motion at hand? And then I would be looking for a seconder. Yes, sorry, I'm just thinking for a moment. Yep. Um, So yes, this would be a direct motion at this time. Okay. Um, because council is not accepting the recommendation of committee of the whole. So in place of that, there's a direct motion to, um, to change the, the membership of the committee of adjustment to five members from the current seven. So I think procedurally um, we need to do uh, we need to pass a motion that allows us to uh, bring this direct motion forward so even though the committee of the adjustment is mentioned in the committee of the whole minutes that recommendation isn't being approved so we're we're back to scratch with a brand new motion 
So we just need a, a quick resolution that council will entertain this direct motion. Okay, so that I'm, make sense? Yep, so okay. I'm not seeing direct motions as a specific item on the agenda. So Clerk Sharbeck, you're suggesting that we could take the, um, we need to have a mover and seconder for a motion to permit, uh, excuse me, to permit a direct motion. Is that correct? Yes, I think that's... Or, or how do you wish to um, proceed, please, in terms of procedure? I think that's the cleanest way, rather than try to have council change a motion of another body. Okay, that's... All right, so at this particular time, even though the Councillor Townsend has um, put forward a motion to um, that the committee of adjustment be comprised of five members of council. Prior to that, because we don't have a seconder yet, but prior to any of that, I would uh, it would require a mover and a seconder to allow for a direct motion at this time with respect to the committee of adjustment motion uh, later on. Is that correct? Okay. So with that, um, is there a mover? for the um, motion to have uh, the Committee of Adjustment motion as a direct motion. Councillor Hamilton, are you moving that motion? Councillor Hamilton, I move the motion. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding that motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Clerk Sharbeck, could you uh, read what that motion will be and uh, then the members of council have clarity on uh, the vote, which I will call that. Do you, Your Worship, moved by Councillor Hamilton and seconded by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. The resolution is that Council um, shall allow a direct motion at this time with respect to Committee of Adjustment composition. Okay, uh, any questions with regard to that? I do see some hands. Is that questions? Your hands are raised with regard to the motion at hand or um, is that something else? So Councillor Hutchinson, is your hand up with regard to the motion that we're dealing with right now? Uh, well, yes, I think it is. I believe I would like to make a, a motion that we um, to remain that status quo because otherwise we have two councillors that um, are left out of that, that information and I don't think that's right. Um, so I don't know whether you wanna vote on this other one and then come back to that, but. I'm suggesting we leave status quo. Quick share back on the procedure, please. And thank you, Councillor Hutchinson. I would say that procedurally, uh, we do have to get a vote on whether or not to allow a direct motion at this time mm -hmm. and then deal with what that direct motion says. Okay, so we've got clarity on that. Councillor Hutchinson, anything further? We'll have that discussion after we deal with the motion at hand for the direct motion. Anything further, that's Councillor? No, that's fine. Okay, Councillor Shea then. Is your question with regard to the direct motion? Uh, Councillor Shea, yes it is. My understanding is the direct motions were for issues which were time sensitive. This doesn't strike me as time sensitive. And so I think it should just be uh, introduced as a, as a notice of motion for our next meeting. Quick share back on, on uh, Councillor Shay's comment. Um, through you, yeah. Worship, I agree with Councillor Shay that this is not an urgent matter, um, in my opinion, but I'm not one of the people voting. Mm -hmm. So if Council uh, deems this not to be an urgent matter, uh, we have, I think, one more Committee of Adjustment meeting this year. So it, the year's kind of wrapping up with the committee as it is right now anyway. There is time before the new year to appoint the committee with whatever composition uh, council themes appropriate. And we are revisiting that committee review report at our next CAL meeting to finish up. So um, perhaps it's best to put that off. Okay, so with that, we do have, um, the motion moved by Councillor Hamilton, second by the deputy to allow uh, the discussion on committee of adjustment, or I'm just paraphrasing. So how we've got a motion duly before us, 
how do so, we proceed then? Um, Councilor Hamilton and Deputy Mayor Hutchinson have the opportunity to uh, proceed with this mm -hmm. if they feel it is an urgent matter, uh, or they may withdraw their resolution. And then where we're at is the minutes have been adopted uh, from the uh, committee of the whole meeting with the exception of that one recommendation. So that one recommendation is not adopted and it's perhaps not addressed tonight either. Uh, so it is up to the mover and seconder if they'd like to proceed. Mm -hmm. Okay, but first before or I withdraw. I, sure, before I go to the mover and seconder, Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm gonna go back to my other point uh, earlier that we have changed the process by moving away from a consent motion. I'm not sure everybody understood that when you do that, that you can't do the poll without question and discussion to follow. Mm -hmm. So that is a change in procedure. So because it's on the table, I'd rather deal with it tonight if everyone's open to it, rather than deferring it yet again for other business that by the time we get through the budget process, we could be uh, tied up with more important things at that point. So my recommendation is we move forward and put it to bed, whether it's five people or seven people is uh, the discussion on the table, I think. But bottom line is I would rather just say, let's get it done tonight and put it to bed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, Councillor Hamilton, will you let the motion stand? Uh, Mayor Robinson, I would prefer to um, withdraw the motion. However, I, I think I was the seconder of the motion. Uh, no, <laughs> I do think this mover. Oh, I'm yeah. a mover. Okay, thank you for that clarity. Uh, I, I would be prepared to withdraw the motion. Thank you. And that it be um, a notice of motion or appear on the next agenda, please. Thank you. Okay, and Deputy Mayor, how do you wish to deal with it? I'll withdraw as well for a wholesome uh, discussion at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Quick, Charbeck, that motion has been withdrawn so that we are now going to deal with um, notice of motion then from Councillor Townsend, and that can come forward at what point under, I would say under item 17, new business on this agenda. Could you just confirm that that would be correct? That after we deal with 17.1, 17.2, I would ask if there's any, um, any other new business and it would be at that time, perhaps that uh, Councillor Townsend can bring his notice of motion or, how do you wish to proceed with that? I think I'm a little bit lost on where we're at. <laughs> so, okay. I, so um, the, where I'm yeah. at, and I think I've missed something, is that the motion to allow a direct motion was withdrawn yes. by both the mover and seconder. So it's gone. Yep. It's not on the floor. And now we are, I thought we were moving on to 9.5. Uh, to approve the committee of the whole planning meetings. And I do have a note that there will be a notice of motion on the next agenda from okay. that withdrawn motion. So yes. the motion was withdrawn, but a notice of motion will be brought forward for the next agenda. So that notice of motion, um, we don't have to have it anywhere on tonight. Okay. Councillor Townsend can just send me an email and say, uh, here's my notice of motion in writing and it will land on the next agenda. Okay, fair enough. That, um, in terms of process that we were utilizing prior, uh, we were identifying that the notices of motion would be under new business, but that's, uh, that's fine with regard to the clarity that you've provided. So with that, Councillor Townsend, is it clear to you to send the clerk an email with regard to your intent of uh, notice of motion with regard to composition uh, or, um, a uh, number of uh, members of council for committee of adjustment. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So we're off that because we do have the um, 9.4 carried then. We are now on 9.5, November 10, 2020, Committee of the Whole Planning. Clerk Sharbrett, could you please read the recommendation? Thank you, Through you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that council hereby adopts the committee of the whole planning minutes and the recommendations therein of November 10th, 2020. Is there a mover for this motion?
Councillor Shea, are you moving the motion? Councillor Shea, yes, I move the motion. Uh, is there a seconder? Councillor Herger, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Herger, yes. Questions or comments on these minutes, members of council? Councillor Townsend. Yes, I just had one question. Um, at the top of page two of the minutes, there's reference to the, um, we'll utilize full municipal services that already exist in the area and provide sufficient capacity. I had a feeling that they needed to extend the water sewer beyond the um, Sunvale. And I was wondering whether or not that should be clear in the minutes. Quick, sure, but could you comment on the minutes, please? The Committee of the Whole Planning? Or would you prefer uh, um, we get a comment back from our planner? Do you, Your Worship? Um, this is uh, a brief summary of the presentation made by our delegates from Georgian Planning Solutions and Cobite Engineering. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I would suggest that perhaps our planner uh, could clarify if they need to be, um, if the minutes need to be clearer on a, any item, or if this is a, a general summary of that presentation. Okay, I am not seeing our planner on uh, my dashboard, but I'm going to look again. Ah, uh, Planner Spencer, could you provide a comment with regard to Councillor Townsend's query? Yes. Um, Planner Spencer, your audio is very faint. Are you able to adjust your mic, perhaps? Is that better? No, uh, no, it is not. Okay. Could you speak a little more so we can confirm? Sure, I will try louder. Is that better in any way? Yes, much, much better. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Through you, Your Worship. Um, that was basically an information session from Georgian Planning Solutions to give council the opportunity to have an overview of the project. Um, at this point in time, I don't feel it's warranted considering uh, more information is warranted considering that additional information will be brought forward at the public meeting where we speak to actual peer reviews and, and comments from staff and the county from an overly high level at this point in time. So if there's something uh, that's a matter of clarification, I'm happy to assist in answering that question, but that, that component was simply for information purposes to describe the project. Okay, thank you for your response. Councillor Townsend, anything further? Nope, that's fine. I just wanted the, uh, the consideration to make sure it was clear enough for everyone. Thank okay. you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Members of council, any other questions or comments with regard to the motion on uh, November 10th, 2020, Committee of the Whole Planning minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate with a check mark, those opposed with a X mark. Uh, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. And Councillor Townsend. Yes, Councillor Townsend, in favor. So that motion did carry. We are now moving on to item 9.6, October 7, 2020, West Gray Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, Clerk Sherbert, could you read the recommendation? Thank you, through you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council hereby receives the October 7, 2020, West Gray Accessibility Advisory Committee minutes. Is there, oops, clear your dashboard, certainly from the last um, vote. And is there a motion for these minutes? Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm moving the motion. Councillor Herger, are you seconding this motion? 
Or, Councillor Herger, yes. Questions or comments? Councillor Shea? It's Councillor Shea, just to indicate that the uh, document attached is indicated as a draft minutes, but in fact, it was an approved minutes. That was a clerical error on my part. Clerk Sharbeck, do we need to adjust anything with regard to the motion or within the minutes at hand? Thank you, Worship. Uh, no, actually, and uh, we can uh, just tidy that up a little bit before we post them on the website as well, or we can tidy them up on the website so that it, it's um, known as final version. Thank you, Councillor Shea, for identifying that on the minutes. Anything further, members of council? Seeing none. All those in favor indicate with a check mark. Those opposed indicate with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. That motion is carried. Item 10, routine department reports. That is an NA for this particular agenda. Item 11, miscellaneous correspondence. 11.1, .1, items for information. 11.1.1. .1 .1. Municipality of Meaford resolution regarding Bill 218, Supporting Ontario's Recovery and Municipal Elections Act. Clerk Sherbeck, I wanted to provide some information with regard to Amos' position. Should I first take a mover and seconder after you read the recommendation or what is your, your recommendation in terms of how I can uh, provide information to members of council and anyone listening? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would suggest that uh, Council receive the one item of correspondence for information. Um, and if there's a mover and seconder, then perhaps have discussion then. Okay, get the mover and seconder and then provide yeah, the information so. and then take questions yeah. from other members of Council. Okay, sounds good to me. We're all clear on that process. Um, Councillor Hutchinson, are you moving the motion as read by the clerk? Yes, Councillor Hutchinson, I move the motion. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm seconding the motion. Okay, thank you very much. I wanted uh, to let you know that um, I spoke with the president of AMO uh, and uh, with regard to this item. Um, so there is, um, he has spoken directly with uh, Minister Clark and uh, he is suggesting that uh, in looking at the changes from, uh, that the committee made with regard to the proposed bill, they've changed the nomination date to the third Friday in August as per Amos request, but have not made any changes with regard to uh, the ranked ballot. Um, I would suggest that if members of council wish to do anything other than receiving this um, uh, report or this correspondence from Meaford, then uh, certainly take the time to read Bill 218 and also Amos' position with regard to uh, Bill 218, Supporting Ontario's Recovery and Municipal uh, Elections Act. In a nutshell, Amos' position is to um, uh, to allow or, or to support members of, well, municipalities do what they wish with the um, ranked ballot that is either opt into that or continue on um, the regular procedure for elections. So um, that's the information that I wanted to provide you and alert you to the AMO submission to standing committee on, on uh, justice policy of the Ontario Legislative Assembly. And that was on uh, November 3rd of this year. Okay, I just wanted to always keep you informed of information. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. And thank you for that update. I would like to, to um, pull this so that we could discuss supporting it for the next um, agenda. 
Um, yep. And that would give us time to look at the bill. Um, I'm not, it's not that I'm suggesting West Gray um, is particularly interested in doing um, uh, a different kind of election system for their next election, but I do want to uh, have the opportunity to, to support Meaford if uh, uh, council uh, agrees that we should support their autonomy in deciding the, the best um, fit for their community. Um, so to Clerk Sherbach, um, how would I go about pulling this to be on the agenda uh, for uh, support of Meaford for next agenda, please? Please go ahead, Clerk Sherbach. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, for that question. It's um, an interesting piece. And since the, I'll just update Council a little bit. Since the um, agenda was published, we've received uh, similar motions from a number of mm -hmm. other municipalities as well. So there's a few to be gathered up. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if um, just through council direction, if you'd like this one brought back or mm -hmm. perhaps a summary of, I would list them all under one mm -hmm. item, you, um, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, resolutions from other municipalities regarding Bill 218, rather than mm -hmm. deal with each one separately, but it, it would give you an idea of what, it would get it back mm -hmm. on the agenda, and mm -hmm. the one from mm -hmm. Meaford as well, and you would see what other municipalities are offering up. It would mm -hmm. also allow members an opportunity to check out AMO's um, it's a, web, it's, a it's on their paper. website, right? They're, Absolutely. Their paper mm -hmm. on it and um, either have a, a more fulsome discussion or mm -hmm. support one of the resolutions or come up with our own, whatever mm -hmm. works for that. Does that help? That helps greatly. Okay. I would, <laughs> thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you, Clerk. So um, however, whatever mechanism we need to make that happen, I would move that or direct that. On. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. So Clerk Sharp, but with regard to that, because they, um, uh, Councillor Hamilton is prepared to move a different motion to bring it on a subsequent meeting, but we do have at hand uh, the motion to receive. So procedurally, take us through our okay. next steps then. I think procedurally, we have to stick with that motion that's on the floor. It's been moved and seconded uh, just to receive the correspondence mm -hmm. item. And I would take following that resolution or a vote on that resolution uh, a request or direction from council to bring back this with the other municipalities motions that are being circulated about Bill 218 um, on the next agenda. So a motion to receive, would not would that impact on the items being brought back at, um, at a subsequent meeting or is this something that, uh, is there a big impact if we do not receive it at this point? Uh, no, council doesn't, uh, through your worship, council doesn't have to receive this correspondence or any correspondence items technically, um, but it won't hurt to receive it and look at it for further discussion on another date as well. Very good. So either, well, however council wishes to proceed is fine. Okay, so we do have a motion on the floor at this point. Councillor uh, Hutchinson, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, just just wondering. So this bill isn't time sensitive. Um, um, has it passed this bill, or is it in in the works? Uh, there's a few things. Let me just see. I think there was. Um, uh, yeah, when when it was looked up uh, this morning, um, the third reading was passed uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, so now it's headed for royal assent. Okay. Okay. So we might be chasing it a little bit if we put it off, but that's fine. We can do that. I, I was, I was also wishing to support it um, just because um, there doesn't seem to be any rationale why they've made the changes. I know uh, there's been some uh, watching the news, the city of London has already used ranked ballot in their last election and spent thousands of dollars um, to, to put it in place. And now they're being told that they can't use it anymore. So it, it just seems a little bit, um, um, I don't know, ridiculous, I guess, in some ways that they've already, they've made the changes without putting forth any reason why. So uh, I'd be a supporter of that. Um, uh, anyways, I just wanted to throw it in there. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I'm not seeing any 
Uh, Councillor Herger, you have your hand up? Yep, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I guess I'm curious about the process in which we end up uh, basically missing these items uh, from, from being brought forward, maybe at a timely point for us to speak up and advocate. I mean, this definitely is an opportunity for us to support Meaford if that is uh, our council's position. However, I'm, I'm hopeful that we would have, um, you know, like a legislative clerk that might bring these things forward and, and just, you know, put them on the agenda for our uh, discussion. And if we need to have further investigation, then we turn it over to our clerk, you know, to see the flavor of Gray County and to see, you know, does this suit Wes Gray at all? Um, I guess I'm looking just for more timeliness to to these items instead of chasing them, as uh, Councillor Hutchison put that. Madam CEO, do you have any comment on that, or do you just want to take that for information? Just for information? Okay, that's fine. Thank you for that. Uh, can, okay. I also, so, can I also ask one last? Floor? Sure. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, to our clerk, is this timely? Do we have some way to affect the change that needs to be changed. Thank you, uh, thank you Council Harger. It's very difficult um, with the bill. If it's already passed third reading, which I'm not sure, I haven't been on the legislature's website today. Is that right, Mayor Robinson? That is just the communique that I received from um, uh, Graydon Smith, who is the uh, AMO president. Okay, uh, but it uh, hang on a sec. Um, so they haven't made. Um, so let me just read my communication. Okay, yeah, so it, it's um, at this point, there hasn't been a, a change with regard to the rank balloting, but the I guess the other informations um, information within that bill. So that's what I have passed third reading yesterday afternoon and is headed for royal assent but i mean you can ask for um your own clarification for yeah. sure um so through you, your worship council however i would say that if it's past third reading and it's headed for royal assent uh, it's very difficult to um have an impact at this point but it's not impossible and i think uh Perhaps just to get a clear picture of what all is included in Bill 218, uh, the AMO paper is probably the, yep. um, the key point uh, to sort of translate that legislation into what's happening and what's being proposed. And I can certainly send that out to council if you would like a link to that or a little bit of a summary about what uh, I think is included in the bill and and go from there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a tough time to, um, after third reading, uh, usually amendments happen after the second reading. So the first reading is it's presented to legislature. The second reading, it may be uh, referred to a committee, a stand committee, but all of the amendments happen between the second and third meeting, generally speaking. So third reading is um, waiting for the technicality, really, of the Royal Assent. But uh, there are a number of municipalities that uh, are continuing to try to address this. And um, united voices do count and do affect change. So. Yeah, okay. I, it's it's not a definite no win. Councillor Herger, anything further? So, whom in our office is actually reading the first readings to know that these things need to be brought up to council and need to be, um, you know, sometimes just a staff report, sometimes saying, "Holy cow, this has been a problem in West Gray, and and this is our solution." I mean, who's reading that first reading? Councillor um, Clerk Sharpback, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for that question. Uh, that would be me providing legislative updates to Council. However, I wouldn't see a first reading. The legislature would. And 
then generally there is a, a news release or an update from AMO communications. They would send out an email to everybody from AMO, um, sometimes through AMCTO legislative update, but AMO is usually quicker on it. And also from our MPP's office, we often get those updates too, that are, um, I think all of council receives at this time. And if you're not receiving them, please let me know and I'll make sure you're added to those mailing lists. So if it's, uh, yes, I um, could have been brought forward much sooner, but that would be me that didn't uh, bring this forward sooner. Um, Okay. Yeah, they got through the second reading very fast and this is where they're at. So I do apologize for that. And I uh, do try to stay up on the legislative updates and ensure that council's informed. And this one is just laid on the take, I guess. I'm sorry for that. Councillor Hergood, anything further? No, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson? Um, yeah, so um, since we did pull this, it's just... Um, to have for the discussion, uh, would it be possible for our um, clerk to maybe just send out an email to some of the other ones that she said she has some uh, on her desk to to ask them if they're interested in still pursuing this, given that the bill is already in reading that third reading, just to let us know if it's worth our time of, of supporting the resolution and then forwarding it. Uh, other municipalities may be may be interested in sending it forward anyways, uh, just to let the uh, provincial government know. Their, in their thoughts. So uh, maybe just a, an email, not to spend a lot of time on it, but just a quick email to some of the other ones and saying, given the situation, do we, do you want to continue going forward? That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. And uh, quick share back. I, I guess the first thing that I expect that you would want to do is just double check on the status of the bill and then um, um, proceed accordingly. Yes, um, for you, this, okay? Worship, I will yeah. confirm the status of the bill. Uh, where it's at and send that information out. Um, all of the municipalities that are sending their resolution looking for uh, resolutions of support, they, um, they also realize that the bill is moving through the legislation, the process as they're doing this. And it, it's the resolutions, whether they're um, before, during or after, and the resolutions of support that can create a resounding voice from the municipal world to our provincial government. So I would say that if this council is interested in having the opportunity to choose ranked ballots, uh, not necessarily choosing them, then yes, we bring back those, th those resolutions and either support them or, or whatever it's council's wish, but I, I don't think it's a waste of time to look at them. Mm -hmm. And as we have um, information items, you know, members of council, you can, um, you know, ask for an item to be put over to another meeting for more discussion. Sometimes it requires a report, um, but it's just, uh, or just to receive. Um, anyway, so I do see Councillor Shea, please go ahead. Thank you for drawing our attention to the AMO uh, position on this, uh, Your Worship. I'm just reading the position right now. And in it, they say these changes were surprising to many municipal governments and AMO recommends withdrawing this schedule, this new schedule for the Elections Act, uh, including the ranked ballot option. So uh, given that, I think we should uh, support the uh, resolution that's in front of us and distribute that uh, support to other municipalities tonight. Uh, I would make that motion if it was permitted, or I would second that motion if that was the motion that Councillor Hamilton was making earlier. Clerk Sherbeck. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Shea, for that. Uh, and it's a good time to make that comment. We have Councillor Hutchinson and Councillor Townsend have moved to receive this correspondence item. So if the mover and seconder um, could change that to um, that council chooses to support this resolution of Mayford. Um, or you could make an amendment to the motion, Councillor Shea. I guess it's up to the mover and seconder. Councillor um, Councillor Hutchinson, would you accept um, the word support so that all um, uh, that all correspondent items not otherwise dealt with 
uh, or I don't know, Clerk Sharvek, rather yeah. than r rather than me writing the uh, motion, could you just state the motion? And then I'll ask Councillor Hutchinson and Councillor Townsend if they're agreeable to that. Okay. Thank you, through your worship. Right now, the recommendation or the, sorry, the motion on the floor states that council will receive this correspondence item. So they, um, request from Councillor Shea is to consider that council supports the resolution of the municipality of Meaford regarding Bill 218, supporting Ontario's Recovery and Municipal Elections Act. Mm -hmm. And that this resolution be um, sent to our MPP, to the Premier, um, and perhaps Gray County municipalities. That's, um, however, that's pretty good that... wordsmithing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, Councillor Hutchinson, would that be agreeable to you as the mover? Yes, I, I would agree with that. The only other thing I would add is, um, can we also forward it to the other uh, municipalities that have asked for support to their resolutions? So if we just send our support, then that sort of is the job done, right? I yes. would say yes, that and the clerk, I would say yes, and the clerk has also confirm that. Yeah. Councillor yeah. Townsend, after hearing the discussion and also the uh, slight amendment that Councillor Hutchinson made as the mover, are you in agreement with that? No, I'm not okay. in agreement. All right, Clerk Sherbeck, because our uh, seconder uh, is not in agreement, can I ask for another seconder at this time or what is the procedure? Through your worship, yep. I would say that uh, moved by Councillor Hutchinson and seconded by Councillor Townsend is that correspondence be received and perhaps um, I mean that can certainly be voted on as it stands okay or Councillor Shea can move that it be amended to say received and supported um, it's Council's wish okay so so we can either deal with an amendment from Councillor Shea first or deal with the motion on, at, on uh, the floor. So procedurally, Clerk Sharvak, what is the direction that we need to follow from the procedural bylaw? Um, I guess it's Councillor Shea, it's up to you if you'd like to move an amendment. And if you would, then we would need a seconder for that. Okay. And vote on um, vote on that amendment. Okay, uh, Councillor Shea, please. How do you wish to proceed if you do wish to proceed? I, I, I move we amend Councillor Hutchinson's uh, motion uh, in the way that uh, the clerk and he described. Okay, is there a seconder that understands the clarity of that motion, um, Councillor, and, and I do as well, and it's just through the discussion process. So thank you, Councillor Shea, for phrasing it that way. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding it? Councillor Hamilton, I'll second the amendment, please. Thank you. Now, with that time frame, Clerk Sherbeck, are you able to read the amending motion? Okay, <laughs> okay. fair enough. Okay. Moved by Councillor Shea. And seconded, sorry, was it Councillor Hamilton? Correct. Um, that the motion be amended to include support for the motion and that the motion be sent to the province of Ontario, a premier, our local MPP, Gray County municipalities and all municipalities that shared their resolution uh, regarding Bill 218. Councillor Shea, are you fine with the wording? Yes, thank you. And Councillor Hamilton, are you also fine with the wording? Yes, Mayor okay. Robinson, thank well you. Done. Well done, uh, Clerk Sherbeck, on that. All right, on the motion at hand, all those in favor indicate with a check mark, those opposed indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, not in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. 
Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson in favor. The motion does carry. Clerk Beck, do we need to go back to the main motion? Or what's the process? Uh, yes, to you, Your Worship. So the main motion now reads that we receive and support. So it includes the amendment in it. So we're back to the main motion, moved by Councillor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Townsend to receive the correspondence um, with the amendment included in that main motion now. Okay. All those in favor indicate with a check mark, those opposed with an X mark. But before I call uh, each of you individually, Councillor Townsend, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, because I um, oppose the amendment, I don't think I should be seconded at this point. Okay. So quick, Sherbeck, am I looking for a seconder here? or does the motion um, drop procedurally? And you're certainly exercising our procedural knowledge uh, today. Uh, we're, we're kind of running thin on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get through the meeting and um, it's okay. Okay, so um, don't be afraid to toss out an opinion here. I think that uh, what was just voted on was an amendment to a main motion. So the main motion was moved and seconded. And now we're going back to vote on it. Uh, but Councillor Townsend, you want to withdraw your name from being the seconder. That's correct. But, uh, this could get a little bit complicated. Uh, however, if there was another member of council, I think who is willing to second this motion, then, um, okay. I, I think we can proceed with it. If there's a, if nobody else wants to second it, then um, the amendment disappears as well, right? Like we, but if there's another member that's willing to second it, I think that's the easiest way to go forward. If everybody's in agreement that that sounds fair. Well, I do see a seconder, quite frankly, but I'm going to ask the question. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Yes, Mayor Robinson, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody need the motion read again? If, if so, put your hand up. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please in, indicate with the next mark. Those opposed, please indicate with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, not in favor. The motion does carry. Thank you. Could you please clear your dashboard? We are on item 12, and that is future committee meetings. Um, you'll note that from 12.1 uh, to 12.5, we have a, a listing of meetings um, scheduled. West Gray Accessibility Advisory Committee, November 19th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Um, Police Building Committee, November 23rd, 2020 at 12 p.m. Committee of the Whole, November 24th, 2020 at 9 p.m. Traffic Safety Working Group, November 25th, 2020 at 11.30 a.m. West Gray Police Services Board, November 30th, 2020 at 9 a.m. Members of Council, are there any additions um, to this list or any other comment beginning with Deputy Mayor Hutchinson? Uh, it's Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I apologize, Mayor Robinson. I have my hand up for another issue. I was asking, gonna request a, a quick break after we're done this item. I apologize, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, now I see Councillor Townsend. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there is a library board meeting uh, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And I just thank wanted you. to let everybody know that. Very good, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Shea. 
Uh, thank you. It's Councillor Shea. Uh, there is not an accessibility meeting on the 17th. Uh, there was uh, one scheduled for the 12th. Uh, that was last Thursday. And I think maybe it was just a transcription error. Okay. So we'll just take that one right off the listing and, and identify that that's not um, correct. Okay. Um, so that is it. Um, we've had a request for a break. Shall we take a 10 minute break? And uh, then, um, for, so we'll recess for 10 minutes, if that's suitable, or you tell me if you want more time. And then we will um, I'll call the meeting back on item 13. But Councillor Shea, you have your hand up. Nope, sorry, that's a okay. leftover. Yep, no problem. Okay, so we'll come back at um, uh, nine, okay, I'll add a minute, 9.50. Okay, everybody, see you then. Okay, members of council, I would say that was a well a needed break and uh, certainly enjoying um, all parts of this agenda, uh, lots of discussion. Um, and certainly um, procedural um, questions, that's um, most exciting. We are now on item 13, communications from mayor and council. Just a couple things that, uh, that I can add to, um, add to the discussion here. Um, West Great Police Services food and toy drive begins on November 25th until December 17th. Donations can be taken to the West Great Police Station in Durham, Granny's in Eaton and Newstead, and Germania Insurance in Eaton. I want to let you know that last year over 100 families were supported by this wonderful initiative. The Christmas lights uh, will be put up uh, tomorrow in Eaton, Newstead, and Elmwood. Uh, Madam CAO, is that still? Uh, the confirmation that I received on the email that that was the case. So, yep, thank you very much. And uh, November 24th in Durham. So that's the, uh, the beautiful lights in, uh, in our urban cores. Um, the four county labor market planning board is conducting a COVID-19 impact survey, uh, which is open to residents of Bruce, Gray, Huron, Perth until November 30th. Uh, please take a few minutes to share how um, COVID has impacted you, your family, and your job. It's on the four, um, four County Labor Market Board website. Um, I also want to let you know that December 1st, 2020, uh, will be the Gray County inaugural, 4 p.m. It will be a virtual meeting. Um, so far, there are two... Um, uh, county councillors running for warden, and that is uh, Paul McQueen and uh, Selwyn Hicks. Um, that's all the information I have. Uh, I wonder, I uh, will go to uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Um, Gray Roots did receive an award of excellence. Uh, I think the uh, mayor probably overlooked that one, but congratulations on that. Um, the only other thing I really have is that um, we had a report at county from Dr. Ayer, and it's just congratulations to our uh, all our students and all our school board staff for their efforts uh, on uh, keeping COVID-19 outbreaks under control in our, in our school board. It's, uh, they've done a fantastic job there. And uh, I am looking forward to the Christmas lights coming on. Stay safe and shop local. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Yes, I just want to add that um, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, for reminding me about Dr. Era uh, and his update. I, I would like at this time, before I um, proceed with the members of uh, council, I want to mention that the municipality of West Gray calls on uh, residents to remain focused on safety measures set up by uh, public health as COVID-19 cases rise in uh, Gray and Bruce. Uh, West Gray continues to follow the direction of Gray Bruce Health Unit and supports the call to remain vigilant. And I would like to thank West Gray citizens for their efforts. And I know everyone will continue to do their part in keeping our community safe. Um, on Sunday, November 15th, 2020, a Gray Bruce Health Unit reported 10 new case, cases of COVID-19 in Gray Bruce.
for a total of 33 active cases. The health unit called on the public to refocus energy on the basic measures that keep us safe by remembering the three W's. Wash your hands frequently, watch your distance and stay two meters apart and wear face coverings. So thank you very much um, for that additional time. Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, just one update to share from Elmwood community. Um, they have a Christmas tree lighting coming up this Sunday, uh, November 22nd, uh, with COVID precautions in place. So this Sunday from four o'clock to 4.30, it's a, it's a shortened event. Um, it will all be outdoors. Everyone's encouraged to gather near the Christ big Christmas tree, socially distanced, wearing masks outside. Uh, and treat bags and takeaway crafts will be provided indi individually wrapped, ready to go for, for kiddos to take home with them. So I'm extending um, this invitation to council and to a community to join us this Sunday, November 22nd at four o'clock um, in Elmwood at the Lions Park. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, um, I just wanted to clarify something first. Uh, um, the, in the uh, listing of meetings, the police building meeting, um, I had it down at 10 uh, a.m. and it said 12 on that. Can you clarify that, uh, Madam Mayor? I'm not sure whether we had a change or I just had it down wrong. I'm not sure, Council Yeah, one good. moment, I'm, uh, good question. And I'm just looking at that right now, November 23rd. Okay, yeah, I have uh, 10 a.m as well. Okay, it says so, 12 end, I think. Okay, yep, so I would say um, that would be identified as uh, 10 a.m. Councillor Shea, do you also have that same time frame? I, I saw 12 written somewhere and I went today to confirm and I could only find it where it said 10. So I, okay. I in my notes had 12, but I, I think maybe it's been adjusted, Doug, from, from 12 to 10. Okay, I had 10 originally, but that's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, staff, any problems with yeah. that? E either one's fine. I just I just wanted to clarify which one it was. Nope. So we're saying 10 yeah. then? We are saying 10. And okay. uh, thank you, staff are fine with that. And it's yeah. uh, been in my book as that. Um, Councillor Shea seems fine with it. And, you know, a very good um, editing eye, shall I say, Councillor Hutchinson. For, uh, for bringing that forward, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you still have the floor. Right, so um, yeah, again, uh, looking forward to the Christmas holidays, given that it's uh, going to be very different this year with COVID. Um, just something I heard today on the radio, actually coming home today, and I'm not sure, haven't seen anything, but it was announcing that West Gray is receiving money money for SWIFT. Um, it said it had two municipalities, West Gray, and I'm not sure, they forget the other one now. And it said that um, it was getting money and it was um, working with the providers to bring SWIFT for, to our municipality. Now, um, maybe I missed it. Uh, has there been anything announced regarding that or is it just something new? Well, Councillor Hutchinson, I have not received that notification and I've just confirmed with our CAO, but we will swiftly look at uh, trying to find that information out and communicate it to the members of council and if so needed any other communicate, but we'll uh, first find out the, um, the origin of that and, and follow through. Thank you. Yeah, it was on FM 102 tonight come just, uh, you know, five o'clock or something. So, okay. Interesting. That's, that's all for me. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Hergert, please. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that uh, segue, let's say, Councillor Hutchison. So I do have a notice on swiftbroadband.ca that says that uh, West Gray and throughout the townships of Chatsworth, Georgian Bluffs and Southgate, more than 39 households and businesses will see improvements to broadband internet. So as this is breaking, we will, uh, you know, our CAO will just follow it closely, but this is November 17th dated. So it is very timely. Um, anyway, obviously just wanting more connectivity is a uh, school needs, um, household needs, everybody's online shopping or shopping locally and getting it, you know, looking through the catalog online. So these things are very important to our everyday lives. 
And, uh, and I just do hope that our CAO keeps us uh, abreast of that change to, uh, to the funding there. Thank you. Thank you, Kelso Townsend. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I attended the Remembrance Day um, uh, services and I went back to the Legion for uh, uh, some uh, camaraderie with uh, other Legion members and that. So it was uh, very cold, very windy, and um, the mayor did very well placing the wreath for the municipality. So um, ML Consulting uh, actually presented to the library the operational and compensation review last Wednesday. So more to come on that. Um, going to participate in an IECO uh, engagement update, which um, is uh, the first opportunity to learn more about their role and the uh, Southwest region updates that they're planning and where they go from there. And from a hydro point of view, we already know we're short of hydro if we want to attract any significant kind of industrials or commercial. So we, uh, the more we learn, the better off we are. Uh, continuing the educational training and um, unconscious bias and racism. And the last one is good news. Um, traffic safety has been looking for funding and support from um, uh, government or uh, other areas. And I'm pleased to say we have um, identified a support resource from MTO as well as potential funding. And more of that uh, hopefully will come out uh, in the next week and uh, as a result of our next uh, committee meeting. But I just thought I'd give you sort of a, a little tease to let you know that there's opportunity there. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shea, please. Oh, now you've got my interest, uh, Stephen. I want to hear more. Um, uh, yes, I also participated in the racism training and I found it really enlightening. So uh, I've encouraged everybody who hasn't gotten around to it to take a look at that. I do believe it's mandatory. Um, the uh, Durham uh, Christmas Parade, which is being organized by the Firefighters Association, uh, is going to be a static parade in the Durham Arena parking lot on December 19th. Um, so they've made that decision to make it uh, safer. And I wanted to point out that uh, Councillor uh, Hutchinson identified ability uh, in seniors uh, that uh, I brought forward to the Accessibility Committee to, that um, would support a project such as making our trails more accessible. We've discussed this with the committee and we've discussed it with staff and it's, it's a grant, so it's a long shot, but it's something that we're going to pursue in the next few weeks. So thanks for that again, Doug. Well, thank you uh, one and all. Um, item 14, business arising from the previous meeting. Councillor Townsend. Uh, yes, a question regarding a comment you made, Madam Mayor, and that is to do with the, um, the tree lighting and the lights being put on in Durham. Is the bridge yep. gonna be uh, uh, lit up this year? Uh, um, I'm going to actually defer the question to Cody Hewitt. So one moment, please. Uh, uh, Cody Hewitt, our uh, supervisor, uh, recreation supervisor. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for the question, Councillor Townsend. Uh, yes, this year we will be lighting the Heritage Bridge. I don't have a set date of when the lights will be going on the bridge. However, it will be by the end of the month. We'll communicate that out, Councillor. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much because it's good news. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 14. Uh, we're still on item 14. Business arising uh, from previous meeting, Councillor Hamilton. Oh, thank you, Mayor Robinson. And through you to CEO Johnston, just mm -hmm. looking for a quick update on um, when to expect the reports for um, the tree planting grant and also the climate action planning. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Madam CAO. Through you, Madam Mayor. We are intending on bringing the tree, uh, tremendous grant application uh, <laughs> report to the next committee of the whole meeting. And I believe our planner, yes, Laura Lee Spencer is still on the call. She's got a little bit of information that, that I, with your indulgence, Madam Mayor, if we could go to Laura Lee to answer the question about the climate change. Yes, of Thank course. You. Thank you. Planner Spencer. Thank you. And through you, Madam Mayor, um, I appreciate the question. The Gray County Council has not yet received the draft plan of the climate action plan. It's slated to come forward in early 2020. Planner Spencer, your audio is extremely challenging. I'm wondering if you could 
adjust your mic. Uh, Is this uh, better? Least... A little better. Let's hear okay. your. Okay, so I apologize. Good, that works. Okay, um, the audio works, that is. Okay, yeah, yep. we're having some broadband issues at the moment, so I appreciate it and I apologize for the At this time, the, the county votes uh, uh, Planner Spencer, just as the audio was getting good, it's not good right now. Okay, I'll try again. Yes. Is that better? So through you, Madam Mayor, I apologize for the inconvenience to everyone. My sincere apologies. Um, the County of Gray is not yet the third draft of the Constitution Plan. So that is stated to occur in the beginning of the um, This is the audio's not, not working again. Um, Supervisor Hewlett, could you provide any suggestions to Planner Spencer in terms of her audio? Um, if I may, Madam Mayor, um, I believe it may be um, just a broadband issue um, with her household as she is um, zooming in from her home. Um, the only suggestion I could have is if you could bear with us a moment and she could possibly call into one of us and we could put her on speakerphone. Okay. I have a feeling that our mic system can pick it up in here. Uh, Laura Lee, if you can hear us, if you want to give uh, Laura a call and we can just put you on speaker. Great. Let's just uh, take a moment. That shouldn't, in theory, take too long. One moment, please. And thank you for everyone's indulgence. And I'm just, uh, I'm just saying. Um, we have a bit of feedback. Oh. We're ready to go with Planner Spencer. Thank you. That was very quick. So. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to hit the um, speaker on my cell phone and we can hear our planner that way. Here she comes. Hi, Laura Lee. Good evening, my apologies to everyone. Um, so through you, Madam Mayor, the County of Gray has not yet passed their draft uh, action plan at this moment in time. We're hoping to do that in 2021 and hoping to have that finalized by the spring of 2021. So at this point in time, uh, until the draft comes out, there really isn't a lot of action that the municipality needs to take other than to be a participant in understanding where the draft of that document comes from. Um, with respect to entering the program to be part of a community partnership in terms of a community action plan locally, it is a free membership that we're welcome to join through resolution by council at any point in time which um, can be put on a future agenda for consideration. Uh, December 1st is the next meeting that it could be put forward to. Um, I suggest that we do join, it is free, and there are 350 plus municipalities that participate in this program. Um, however, without the draft from the community direct or the county directive, I should say, I think that it would be premature for us to start drafting our own um, five modules that that program requires at this point in time. I have nothing further, but I'm happy to answer, answer any questions that you may have. Okay, um, that's great. Planner Spencer, if you could stay on the line just in the event that there is uh, subsequent questions. Councillor Hamilton. Oh, thank you, Mayor Robinson. I'd be looking for then an, um, a report that could come from Planner Spencer um, with those points and that that could be on a, a future agenda. Um, uh, so I guess, uh, an update <laughs> about, yes. about the motion um, so that we could have a more fulsome discussion um, as the motion did speak to um, having this discussion back in September. So um, if that would be suitable, I'd be looking for, I guess, a, a tweener report with, <laughs> with what she's mentioned here on the phone tonight uh, that we could discuss further, please. That will not be a problem. Okay, thank you. Report. Thank you. Um, anything further, Councillor Hamilton? No, thank you very much. Okay, um, you're welcome. And Councillor Townsend? Uh, yes, um, in the last week or so, there was a, an announcement from the province about giving municipalities the opportunity to reduce taxes for employers and recognizing um, that our budget discussion is coming up. Uh, I wasn't sure whether or not we should have a separate discussion on that item or because it also included um, affordable housing has also been announced. 
which is uh, tended primarily to be at the county level. But with our budget coming up, I'm thinking that we need to have a discussion on both of those two points to determine a position of council so that uh, one, we decide what our action is and two, what impact, if any, it would have on our budgeting. Excellent uh, question and comment there. Uh, Director Mighton, could you um, provide a response? Um, sorry, could you repeat your statement? I was uh, away from my desk. Not a problem. Councillor Townsend, please. Yes, um, in the last week or so, we've had an announcement from the province about uh, providing the ability for municipalities to reduce the, um, the property tax for uh, employers. And also um, there's funding for um, affordable housing, right? To municipalities as well. And since both of those, um, we haven't discussed nor uh, made a position on it for council. I was thinking we should do that, but it'll also impact budget. So I was wondering whether we should have a discussion at budget time about those things or have it before. Um, and those would both be county level decisions um, and your budget will be set based on one thing and that your tax rate will be um, the, special, the biz, small business tax class would be a different tax class if the county chooses to adopt it. Um, so that would just how the, our tax levy is divided up so it's not going to affect your budget you'll still need to raise your budget dollars um, affordable housing housing is a county level um, program funding is a is a county level uh, for housing uh, a county level decision so that's where that would lie okay i guess i was yeah i guess i was raising it because of the fact that it mentioned municipalities rather than upper tier um, which it normally does, number one. And uh, number two is that recognizing that there is an opportunity to recover costs through um, COVID funding, which I do believe we've received some and more may be coming. I uh, wasn't sure whether or not it would affect our budget in the sense of the rate, but yet we would anticipate recovering that. So that's yeah, why I wondered if a discussion needed to be had. So. Yeah, and when it refers to municipalities, um, it is upper tier or single tier that makes the decisions on the tax classes, the optional tax classes that we adopt. Um, so if the county does not adopt a small business um, tax class, then we don't have the option as the lower tier municipality to make that decision. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. That was all, Madam Mayor. Yep. All right, appreciate that. Anything further? Clerk Sharvak? Nope. Is there anything further? Your Worship, I have nothing further to add. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are now on staff reports, item 15. 15.1, Director Finance Treasurer, 15.1.1, Approval of Accounts, Voucher 20-2020. Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the recommendation? Through your worship, the recommendation is that council approves voucher number 20-2020 in the amount of $467,880.26. Is there a mover for this motion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving the motion? Yep. You'll need, thank you. Yeah, sorry, Mayor Robinson. This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I'll move the motion. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding the motion? Councilor Hutchinson, yes, I second the motion. Director Mighton, is there anything that uh, you need to draw our attention to with regard to these uh, uh, vouchers? I uh, know the accounts are just standard. There's nothing surprising in there if, unless there's any questions from council. Okay, and that's my um, point now to say, members of council, are there any questions? Councilor Hutchinson. Yeah, Councilor Hutchinson here. So I do have a couple questions. Um, mm -hmm. One is on the first uh, first page um, of the statement, and it talks about AMO uh, conference um, having a refund for Townsend, Hergett, and Johnson. And I'm I'm sort of curious. I also attend. That was the AMO uh, summer conference that was virtual. I also attended that conference. I know there was some issue with my registration, but I'm just curious why 
Um, my name isn't there, and maybe someone could look into that um, to figure out what's going on with that. Director yep, Martin? No. Sure, I can definitely look into that and just see if it was uh, had already been received in a separate um, uh, statement or not, but I will look into that, Councillor. Yeah, okay. Maybe check with Laura, um, mm -hmm. uh, our other Laura, because she yeah. they had sent her an email saying that um, mine wasn't paid or something, so uh, and she was looking oh. at Okay. So yep. maybe that has something to do with it. Yep. Uh, another question I had, and this maybe goes to our director of infrastructure, if he happens to be on the line there somewhere, um, having to do with our um, um, Bensic landfill costs. Now I don't see um, one. It's page one hundred seven. One hundred seven. Yeah, one hundred seven on our uh, agenda. It's um. um uh, there was a October. There was a service call to repair the Bentig landfill scale, and uh, just sort of curious of what kind of repairs we had done there. And another one had to do with a truck rental of thirty hours for um, uh, rock truck rental. So I'm not sure. We're, maybe that was for moving some of the um, um, the other refuse or something around the landfill. So I'm just wondering, can he re respond to that? Director Sherwinski, please. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yep. thank you. Well, okay, great. So, uh, through your worship. Um, so, uh, the uh, first uh, issue um, uh, that uh, was asked about was with respect to the scale. Um, we had a power outage uh, and surge, uh, so we had to have uh, an individual come in and uh, repair the scale and reset the software and so forth with respect to that. Uh, the second expense with respect to the rock truck, um, we uh, were using uh, the rock truck to, um, um, for, as part of our clay capping uh, in Durham. And, um, and when we do that, we need uh, a truck that's, our, uh, basically that rock truck is like a six wheel drive and it can um, traverse the terrain uh, as opposed to say a conventional dump truck. So that's what it was hired for there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I do have a couple other questions, if I may. Uh, and probably again to the Director of Infrastructure. May I go ahead? Uh, yes, go ahead. I, I thought okay. you were asking the chair. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, I was asking somebody, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, um, the, the further down on, uh, I don't know what page it is, but towards the end of the uh, uh, very last page, I guess. There was a, an item about Enbridge um, pulverizing the asphalt on concession two. So this goes along with our uh, gas line that went on concession two. And uh, I just happened to be biking on there the other day with uh, my road bike on a gravel road, which wasn't a good scene. But um, I see that it's now uh, has gravel and it's in great shape, um, has a gravel down there. So I'm just curious uh, looks like so they pulverized the old asphalt sounds like and put it back down. Are we looking at tar and chipping next year on that road uh, director? Uh, through your worship uh, uh, for the committee the whole we have a report on our capital projects as well where I've uh, indicated that as well but uh, also uh, just to let uh, uh, council know um, but uh, the intention is to put a hard top back on that road uh, once the bridge is built. Uh, as we all know, uh, the Lawrence Bridge will be under construction. Uh, the plans are for it to be under construction next year. And um, so, um, so uh, in fact, uh, Enbridge did have the road pulverized back to gravel. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's the plan for the future. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So next, next year... Yeah, it makes sense to have the bridge done, I guess, first. So um, the other one was uh, maybe with the, that bridge 17 and Bent, Bentic, maybe, Director, if you can just do a little update. Uh, maybe this is coming out in your committee, the whole report, I don't know. But uh, I did have a phone call on it and, and just maybe to, just quickly to bring council up to speed on that. So not at this time. We're just dealing with the vouchers at hand, but we'll just note that you're looking for an update at uh, the most appropriate time. Okay. okay. So we're just... Well, there was there was a cost in the, the voucher. That's why I was questioning it. But uh, um, having but to it would be with, directed uh, to the cost, not an update. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So sixty three thousand dollars to rehab the structure. I'm just curious what that was for. Director Sharinsky, please. 
uh, certainly uh, through through the chair, um, that uh, that money was essentially a progress payment for the uh, uh, the rehabilitation of Bridge Seventeen. Okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Look forward to a further report on that. Thanks. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll receive a pending uh, report from Director Sharinsky at the appropriate time with regard to that. Councillor Townsend, please. Yes, thank you. Um, similar on Bridge 17, I was just going to ask if that was the full payment, but I'm gathering from your comment it is not. And I direct it with the director. Uh, your worship, uh, that's correct. Uh, that was just the, uh, the first progress payment with respect to that project. Okay, otherwise I was going to congratulate you on a much, uh, much cheaper job than, than anticipated. And the other point I wanted to do is just a uh, shout out on the job for the steps that we noticed uh, have been redone uh, during the Halloween drive through and it was uh, was amazing. Thank you very much. Those are both my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions with regard to the um, approval of accounts voucher 20-2020? Okay, seeing none. Um, you have the motion before you, moved by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, seconded by um, Councillor Hutchinson. All those in favor, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. We're now on item 15.2, Chief Administrative Officer, 15.2.1, 2020 Holiday Hours. Clerk Sharvek, could you please read the recommendation? You, you worship. The recommendation is that report CAO 2020 holiday hours, West Gray Municipal Office, be received, and further that um, Council approves the 2020 holiday hours at the West Gray Municipal Office to close at 12 noon on Thursday, December 24th, with a return to COVID hours of 10 a.m. to 4:30 p.m., effective January 4th, 2021. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving the motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'll move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hutchinson seconds the motion. Uh, Madam CAO, do you have a um, presentation? I would hope you do. Yes, thank you, thank three, you. Madam Mayor. And good evening, Council. It's nice to see everyone after so many months of, of black screens. Uh, I, I just wanted to give a little bit of a brief update on how this came to be, this, this um, request. Um, we have been open to the public on the reduced hours, I believe since about September. And uh, while we haven't seen a huge influx of, of visitor traffic, um, it has been uh, those that have come in have appreciated it, but what that's telling me is that um, our citizens have found other ways to work with the municipality that they were using during our, our lockdown. Um, the holiday season is, is fast upon us and it is typically even quieter than what we're witnessing right now. Um, as part of how we manage uh, through our COVID uh, work procedures, we are uh, being constantly mindful of the well-being of staff. And during our last staff meeting, staff proposed a way to use up some of their banked vacation time or on the, on the flip side, some vacation time that they had been saving for the Christmas break um, by mirror, and, and, and the proposal was if, if West Gray would be interested in mirroring some of the other municipalities who actually do a Christmas shutdown as a regular, um, uh, as their regular scheduling. So you will note on the staff report that there, it's very clear that 
critical staff, um, senior management staff, or those who would be deemed part of the emergency control group would be expected to respond as required. So there is still a contingency in the proposal that, um, you know, for, for the majority of office staff that, that um, are, are requesting this, that that's, we can accommodate. But for those of us who have um, other expectations in our, in, our, um, in our job descriptions and our responsibilities, we would be available to respond should we need to. So I leave it to committee to ask questions, to discuss, and um, we can take it from there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Chelsea, you have your hand up. Thank you, Madam CAO. Sorry, my mic was not on at that moment. Councillor Townsend, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, thank you for the report, uh, Madam CAO. I just have a clarification, and I'm going to tell you what I'm hoping it says. On your report, um, the last paragraph on the first page and the uh, first paragraph on the um, second page, one says three days, the other one says three and a half days. Oh. And I'm hoping the council would approve absorbing the half day and it would only be three days we'd ask staff to contribute. Was that your intent? Uh, thank you for the question. And through you, um, Madam Mayor, actually, Councilor, you're very generous. The it, staff had been prepared to use three and a half vacation days. Okay. Anything yeah, further, Councilor? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think they've worked hard enough and you know, with COVID and everything else and, and even during it, and uh, you know, the inconvenience of home and office switching pretty regularly and uh, as you say, it's it's not really costing us anything and I, I think that would be uh, a great gesture on our part. That Further comments? Comment. Sorry, Councillor Townsend. Yeah, that was my only, my only comment, thank you. Okay, fair enough. Further comments or questions? Councillor Hamilton. Oh, thank you, Mayor Robinson. Through you to CEO Johnston. Um, I, if a citizen had like an after hour concern, like let's say a road concern, is there a way that um, a citizen could connect with staff currently? I'm just not aware of what the process is. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the question through you, Madam Mayor. We do have a contingency for particularly, you know, road work, that kind of um, thing that would be deemed as critical service. I would welcome um, our director of public works to, to explain a little bit more about that if, if that's okay. the will of, um, Committee. Nope, let's go for it right now. Director Sherwinski, please. Uh, to your worship, um, essentially, um, uh, we, uh, uh, first of all, um, all of our, um, our roads, crews, et cetera, will be scheduled to be on uh, throughout that week. Um, so uh, normally uh, they would either contact uh, uh, supervisors and or we would be checking messages here at the office. Um, but in any event, we would make sure that uh, uh, we made every effort to um, uh, capture any uh, requests uh, that um, would occur after hours. Uh, although we do not get that many of them as it stands right now, um, uh, and after hours that is, uh, but in any event, um, We'll make sure that we capture those and that they are addressed. Okay, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you. Anything further then? Okay, uh, Councillor Hergert. Thank you. Um, one question that I always have trouble with is after hours. If someone has a livestock, um, a kill situation that is very time sensitive, how are they to get a hold of the appropriate staff member uh, within the, the 24 or 48 hours of a longer period of time where we're closed? Madam CIO, please. Uh, and through you, Madam Mayor, thank you for the question, Councillor. My understanding is that they would they would simply dial 911 and get in touch with West Gray Police, and then the police would, would get in touch with our animal control officer. That, that system runs independent of the municipal office. So I'm not asking about animal control though. I'm asking about like the provincial ministry and they have someone locally that's going uh -huh. to, right? Right, sorry, my misunderstanding. I, I have an indication that the clerk has a response for us on that one. Okay. Thank you. Clerk Sharpak. There we go. 
we go. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Thanks for that uh, question, Councillor Hergard. It is important to have a plan for um, after hours, long weekends, um, and especially uh, a holiday office closure. Right now, uh, technically, the process is with a livestock kill. The farmer needs to call the clerk as soon as possible. And I would call our livestock valuer to go out and investigate. We do have our livestock valuers information on the website that people um, in that situation, if they can't get a hold of the clerk, they can call him. Um, although the, the process should flow through me, but uh, he and I can connect outside of office hours uh, through email or telephone calls for sure. And the important piece is that uh, nothing is moved or disturbed until um, ideally he attends the scene. And if that's not possible, um, sometimes if it's a, a lamb that may attract more, <laughs> more predators, it just left, uh, left there if the carcass is left, then we need some really detailed good pictures of the carcass and the surrounding area and any footprints, things like that. But those are things that we can explain over the phone to the farmer. So definitely we have our valuers information on the website. And I think uh, for an extended closure, uh, like a long weekend um, or the holidays like this, you've raised a good point. And I think some clarification could be added to our website about what ifs and specifically for the livestock claims. So that's a, a, could be a really good improvement we could make with that. Thanks and for bringing that up. Even if, uh, just as a suggestion, I don't know how you'll go with this, but even just as a suggestion that they would follow around, circle back with a, an email. Yes. It's time sensitive and it only has seemed to, uh, to jingle a bell on my phone when it's the weekend. So. Uh, I appreciate the extra effort on the on the website to get that information out. Thank you. Yes, we will share that and um, add a little bit fuller what if, but we do get uh, senior managers. I do get those emails on my phone at home. So I, I would definitely be checking once a day, just a, a, probably a couple times throughout the day. So it wouldn't be uh, more than three days couldn't go by that, yeah, following up with the email is an excellent idea. Thanks for that. We can do that before the holidays. Members of council, is there anything further with regard to 15.2.1, 2020 holiday hours? We have a motion on the floor. Any other comments or questions? All right, then. Um, all those in favor, please indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, please indicate with an X mark. So, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, yes. Motion carried. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six bylaws, and uh, we're at 10.34 p.m. And a bit more of this agenda. We've got new business. Let's see if we could press on members of council, if you could clear your dashboard. We are now dealing with item 16, bylaws. 16.1 bylaw 77-2020 zoning amendment 1993934 Ontario Inc ZA-10-2020 Clerk Sharbeck could you please read the recommendation Through you, your worship the recommendation is that the council of the municipality of West Gray gives first second and third and final reading to bylaw number 77-2020 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 37-2006. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Herger, are you moving this motion? Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor, uh, Councillor, 
Councillor Hamilton, sorry about that. Are you seconding this motion? Excuse me. Uh, yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, questions or comments? All those in favor, signify with a check mark. Those opposed, with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. Item 16.2, bylaw 78 2020, long term borrowing agreement for police services building. Clerk Sherbeck, could you please read the recommendation? Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 78 2020 a bylaw to authorize the mayor and treasurer to sign an agreement between the municipality of West Gray and Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Is there a mover for this motion? <laughs> Councillor Townsend, are you moving this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm moving the motion. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I will second the motion. Questions or comments, Councillor Hamilton? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I just had a question from a citizen regarding why um, the interest rates uh, weren't included. I, I have a hunch as to why, but I'll ask staff. Thank you so much. Director Mighton, please. Sorry, I missed the question. Oh, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Director Mighton, I just had a resident ask why um, the interest rates weren't included in the bylaw. Thank you so much. The um, because the uh, they won't secure the interest rates change every day. Um, yes. So until we lock it in, um, and which I need the bylaw to authorize me to lock it in, yes. um, they will be probably <clears throat> around that two point zero three, but it could be slightly different. So once we get the actual schedule, that will be uh, included, uh, supplemented in there with the payment rates and the, uh, um, the actual interest rate and the installment amount. Perfect, thank you, Director. That's exactly what I said, but I thought I'd yeah. double check. Thank sure. you so much, okay. Councillor Shea. Uh, thank you. I, I'm just curious, uh, Carrie, on uh, big loans like this, do we uh, ask for competitive quotes from, uh, local banks? Uh, not from other local banks. Um, we deal with uh, CIBC, but we did, um, I did approach the Infrastructure Ontario for debenture funding. Okay, because I, I've found when I'm um, needing uh, loans that the bigger the loan, the more leverage I have in, in uh, discussing rates uh, with competing uh, organizations. I just wonder if that's something you would consider down, going down the road? Um, we can certainly look at that on, on future um, borrowings, um, whether it would be as competitive as the, uh, the current rate that we have where with the existing, um, where all of our investments are and everything, but we can certainly look at that for, uh, for future borrowing um, rather than holding up this one um, at this point, but for the uh, police station building, the construction, when we go for that loan, we can certainly um, reach out to a few other banks to see if their rates are as comparable um, as uh, as our current provider. Okay, uh, thank you. That would be appreciated. Councillor Hergert. Yes, thank you. I had an inquiry from a resident uh, asking about how did we finance this land purchase already to this point? And so I, I know that we're also anticipating a build and I'm just curious, how did we finance it up until this point? This closed months ago. Director Mighton. Thanks. Yep. So um, we had sufficient amounts in our uh, bank account. Also, the county and school boards delayed the payment of their installments. So we also had that cash flow that helped supplement it. Those installments are now, uh, will both, uh, the 
September and December installments to the school boards will be uh, due December 15th and December 31st. So we will be spent, we won't have that money. We're going to be throwing, we're going to be remitting the $2 million to the uh, school boards that we've had the luxury of keeping in our bank account up till this point. I knew there was a swell answer and I will be happy to pass that information along. Thank you. You're welcome. I am not seeing anything further. All those in favor, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend in favor. Motion carried. Item 16.3 bylaw 79 2020 appointment, or sorry, appoint fire chief for Elmwood Fire Department. Clerk Sherbeck, could you read the recommendation? Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the Council of the Municipality of West Gray gives first second and third and final reading to bylaw number 79-2020 being a bylaw to authorize the appointment or sorry being a bylaw to appoint a fire chief for the Elmwood Fire Department. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hergert are you moving this motion? Councillor Hergert yes I will move the motion. Kels, um, is there a seconder for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will second the motion. Questions, comments? All those in favor, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. Item 16.4, bylaw 80 2020, adopt a multi year accessibility plan. Clerk Sherbeck, could you please read the recommendation? Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the, the Council of the Municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 80 2020, being a bylaw to adopt the multi year accessibility plan. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Shea, are you moving this motion? Councillor Shea, yes, I move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hutchinson seconds the motion. Questions, Councillor Hergert? Yes, I was curious, first off, this came with a recommendation from the Accessibility Committee. Is that accurate? Clerk Sherbeck, could you provide clarity? Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, I believe on our last agenda, I'm not sure, was it a council agenda? Um, that um, Jonathan Settle brought forward a report with the multi-year accessibility plan attached and the accessibility plan had been, um, I think that the, the, our local committee worked diligently on it and certainly vetted it. And perhaps Councillor Shea might provide a little bit more. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Before going to Councillor Shea, um, Madam Sale, do you know the, um, with regard to um, Coordinator Zettel uh, did a lot of work on this and made the presentation. And then we're at the point where the actual bylaw is to be um, uh, approved this evening in order to um, activate the plans within the uh, accessibility plan. However, that's my take on uh, the, the presentation last meeting, uh, but could you elaborate? And then I could go to Councillor Shea. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, yes, that, that's, that's the flow that I recall as well. And we're here tonight to, to pass the bylaw to adopt the plan. Okay, good. Thanks Thank for you. that clarification. Councillor Shea, do you have anything further to add? 
yes, I'll, I'll just say that the, the, the committee did review it, uh, made some suggestions to Jonathan, uh, some of which were incorporated, uh, but also to point out that our local advisory committee is not a statutory committee. Um, our statutory obligations are fulfilled by our participation in the committee at Gray County. Um, so um, we, we weren't asked to um, pass a resolution uh, supporting the, um, the, uh, the plan, um, but there was certainly a spirit of uh, cooperation and, uh, will, and eagerness to move forward with it. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Herger. Well, I, I guess I'm still asking, did they endorse it? Is this, uh, is this the final plan? Uh, you said some of the changes um, or recommendations were incorporated and, and some were not. So, I mean, I don't want people on a committee to feel frustrated that they're not being heard or that, you know, staff always get the final say. I want it to be of our community. I, I would say the committee f f felt very well heard and that they uh, were very supportive of this plan. Okay, thank you. But thanks for your anything, concern. Anything further? Not at this uh, time. Any member of council? All those in favor then, signify with a check mark. Those opposed, signify with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. The motion is carried. Item 16.5. Now this is um, the addendum. So you'll note there was a, a numbering change uh, from the, these next two uh, bylaws. 16.5 is now bylaw 81-2020, uh, no demand for municipal services site plan agreement, Zabel. Clerk Sherbert, could you read the recommendation? To you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that the council of the municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 81-2020, being a bylaw to authorize a no demand for municipal services site plan agreement. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? This is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I will move the motion. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Townsend, I second the motion. Questions? Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, you know, just uh, Councillor Hutchinson here. Just a question. Um, in there, it mentions about garbage pickup and that um, obviously uh, our, west, our waste management wouldn't be expected to go down on, on um, a non-maintained road to pick up garbage. But if they live close to the corner or to a, a maintained road, then would they not be able to put their garbage there uh, to be picked up? I wasn't sure this way it was worded that whether they were able to use our services or not. Uh, they do pay taxes, so. Okay, good question. So I'm first um, going to say, Madam CAO, you were, uh, were you dealing with this portfolio or uh, who should the question be directed to? Sorry, three, three Madam Mayor. I, I, I believe that that should go to our Director of Public Works. He could speak to that uh, service level. Thank you. Thank you. Director Schwinski, please. Uh, through your worship, um, essentially, uh, if, the, uh, if their garbage was placed at curbside uh, uh, near uh, that particular uh, laneway, then um, um, the, the garbage would still be picked up. Um, the homeowners would be responsible for boxes and cans uh, thereof. Okay. Councillor Hutchinson, anything else? No, I, I, th I think that was just worth clarifying. I, I just, the way it was worded, I wasn't sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Thank you, uh, Mayor Robinson. And through you to Councillor Hutchinson, I just wanted to let him know that the uh, the neighbor there that is on that road now currently does take it out to the road and they do do a curbside 
they won't go down the road, but they do get a, a pick up there, just so you know. Okay, that's good. That's what I thought. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further, members of council? All those in favor then, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. 16.6 bylaw 82-2020, confirmed proceedings of council. Kirk Sharbeck, could you please read the recommendation? The recommendation is that the council of the municipality of West Gray gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 82-2020 being a lot by law to confirm matters addressed at the November 17th council meeting. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving the motion? Councillor Hamilton, I move the motion. Councillor Shea, are you seconding the motion? Councillor Shea, I second the motion. Questions? Seeing none. All those in favor indicate with a check mark. Those opposed with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Motion carried. Okay, we are on 1052. Uh, Madam CAO, could you advise on the procedural bylaw with I, um, going past 11? What does our procedural bylaw say and what do we need to do? Or, um, you know, just in terms of our, we can either, well, I guess that's the first thing, does, um, let me rephrase this. Our procedural bylaw suggests that, or tells that us that we need to adjourn by 11. Is that correct? To you, Your Worship, yes. So council, uh, the meeting adjourns at 11, unless council passes a resolution um, authorizing proceeding past 11 p.m. curfew to um, complete the items on the agenda or get to a certain part on the agenda, whatever council's wishes. So council, we can either entertain that motion or if you wish, um, and you're looking at uh, adjourning sooner, uh, if you want to dispense of the, um, the items at hand, which is item 17, there's two new business items anyway, uh, and um, that they could be put on a subsequent meeting and then we can address the, the balance of the items, I think before 11 o'clock. How do you wish to proceed? Um, so somebody please comment with a hand up. So my, my suggestion is we either um, deal with items on, um, of new business on a, another agenda, but we could probably get through the addendum and uh, items 18 through 23 now or um, there would need to be a, a note, a, not a notice, a motion, um, a motion to go beyond 11. Starting with Councillor Shea, what's your comment? Um, uh, Councillor Hergert's uh, notice of motion seems time sensitive, so I would be eager to try to address that this evening. Um, I'm not too concerned about the uh, aggregate resource property revaluation, um, but I, I would like to see 17.2 addressed, addressed this evening if at all possible. Councillor Hergert, um, any further comment? I would second that. Uh, thank okay. you, Councillor Shea. Okay, we don't need a seconder on that, but uh, thank you, I, I, we hear your point. So members of council on uh, item 17, new business 17.1, support for County of Wellington resolution regarding aggregate resource property evaluation that could be put on the next suitable agenda. Would everybody be in agreement with that? Okay, I'm not, I'm seeing a lot of uh, thumbs up or uh, hands um, shaking to the affirmative. 
Mr. Chavet, we don't need a motion to that effect. We've got consensus unless you're telling me something different. To you, Your Worship, I think uh, it would be tidy to do a motion to proceed past curfew to address the matters on the agenda. And if council chooses to um, consider this 17.1, it is just a motion of support for somebody else's resolution. Um, but we will definitely be past 11 to address the remaining items on the agenda. Okay, so if you could read your recommendation again, and I'll look for a mover and seconder. Um, I guess the recommendation is um, that we proceed past curfew uh, to address matters on the agenda. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, yes, I move the motion. Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes. Is there a question from members of council? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, indicate with a check mark, those opposed with the next mark. Here, Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. Okay, so item 17.1. Um, there seems to be an indication uh, that we could deal with this item at a subsequent meeting. Uh, that was a last conversation before we dealt with the uh, motion to go beyond 11. Do you need a motion to that effect, Clerk Sherbeck, to place it on a subsequent agenda? Um, through you, Your Worship, mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, just the direction of council will suffice and okay. we'll make note of that in the minutes. Okay, so members of council then, we're, we've got item 17.1 addressed in that capacity, unless, okay. Is, uh, does anybody else wish to deal with it differently? Okay. Councillor Hutchinson? Well, I was, gonna, I was gonna suggest, Councillor Hutchinson, I was gonna suggest that we just um, either support it or not support it. And that's basically all we're doing, is it not? Um, I think we've already had somewhat of a discussion on it. Um, yes, actually, that was um, brought forward from Ms. Cellini's correspondence from her last council meeting. Are you looking at putting a motion forward? Yes, I would make a motion that we support the resolution, yes. Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this? Councillor Hergert, yes, I will second that. Questions, comments? All those in favor indicate with a check mark. Those opposed with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. And Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend in favor. Motion carried. We are now on 17.2. Uh, just give me one moment. Okay, 17.2, notice of motion, affordable housing. Um, moved by Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, do you wish to read your motion? I can do that. Are we ready now? Ready, set, go. Okay, go ahead. Whereas the Government of Canada announced the launch of the new Rapid Housing Initiative that invests $1 billion to create 3,000 new permanent affordable housing units across the country, whereas Gray County supports housing for all, and uh, whereas West Gray has a strategic pillar to, of assist in the creation of affordable housing, whereas West Gray has a community improvement plan, Whereas Rapid Housing Initiative will quickly develop new modular multi-unit re rentals, convert non-residential buildings into affordable multi-residential homes, and rehabilitate buildings that are abandoned or in disrepair 
into affordable multi-residential homes. Costs to purchase land and buildings will also be eligible under the new initiative. Therefore, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray support via municipal resolution applications submitted under the project stream submitted from October 27th until December 31st, 2020, and let it be resolved further that the CAO will direct staff to complete supporting applications for potential deeply affordable housing via FCM's Rapid Housing Initiative grant program. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I'll second the motion. Okay, uh, before I take questions, I want um, members of council to have some information before them, uh, before making a decision on how they wish to vote on this. Um, this funding model uh, fits big cities. Uh, it's not, uh, as I understand from our um, uh, director of housing at uh, the county, um, for uh, that it's not a fit for uh, Gray County. Uh, the funds are for renovations of buildings such as motels to house people experiencing homelessness. Due to COVID, many shelters in the big cities moved people out of shelters where they share rooms um, to motels where they could have their own space. This already is a practice of Gray County. The province put out funds to buy and renovate motels where possible. They have, had, they have also opened up funds to renovations of properties. The catch is the renovation has to be completed by December of 2021. And there is a minimum of a 100,000, um, uh, sorry, $1 million contribution uh, by the proponent. And there is no ongoing subsidy for staffing or operating costs. This would work for shelters as existing operating funds could be redirected for staff operating, um, staff and operating. In our case, funding would, and that's at the county level, uh, would need to be provided for staffing and operating costs that does not currently exist. Uh, the county did put out feelers for possibilities just in case. The deadline for the application is of course, December 31st, 2020. In saying that, um, Gray County was successful through Social Services Relief Fund. That's a separate uh, grant application. Um, they, uh, Gray County just heard this morning that they were successful to fund three renovations for trans transitional housing for a total of nine to 10 units. Uh, this will allow Gray County to move people from emergency housing to somewhere more stable and work on permanent housing. So uh, I can tell you that uh, the county's just received uh, that notice for grant approval and the three projects are in Owen Sound for indigenous transition uh, victims of domestic violence and um, for mental health uh, nonprofit. Um, I did uh, receive this information from Anne-Marie Shaw who's the director of housing at Gray County and I also want to mention uh, before I go any further that I have extended an invitation to Anne-Marie Shaw to come out to a uh, convenient uh, meeting of West Gray Council to uh, just provide an update on county um, initiatives with regard to housing. So that being said that this grant is more suitable for big cities, not suitable for Gray County or or um, West Gray, and perhaps there will be uh, future funding opportunities geared, geared to Gray County initiatives. Um, there is no shelter program in Gray County. Uh, that's the information that I wanted to provide to um, members of council. And are there any questions with regard to the motion at hand? Councillor Herger. Yes, so this project is actually from the federal government. And the $1 billion in funding would be provided through two separate streams. One of them would be the major city stream, which is $500 million for immediate support uh, to predetermined municipalities. And I, I would trust that the information that you've received is, is not supportive under that stream. However, the project stream is $500 million as well for projects based on applications from provinces, territories, 
municipalities, this could even be Gray County upper tier, indigenous governing bodies and organizations and including nonprofit organizations. And so the opportunity is that if someone would come forward, I'm not asking for any West Gray monies to be spent on this, but if there would be an application that would come forward that would fit into the project stream, maybe it hasn't even been thought of by Gray County yet, although they are in close contact with several builders and developers. I believe that West Gray could be supportive of the application through the project stream and not necessarily through the major city stream. So I believe that we have just heard a social services uh, delegation earlier in this meeting and the first prim priority was for um, addiction health, secondly mental health, third crime prevention and fourth housing and the fifth was even poverty reduction. So um, I believe that this does hit on several um, major important priorities for West Gray and Gray County. And I believe that all I'm asking for is that if there would be someone who comes forward in the next two months, they would have an opportunity to have um, a supporting resolution from council, some sort of affirmation that West Gray is highly supportive of development for affordable housing in our community. And I think that uh, stream of funding teamed up with the potential through the community improvement plan. Uh, there are some derelict buildings in our community that could use resources to be revitalized. And if the uh, outcome was affordable housing and it went through this mechanism, I think that we've uh, done our job. We've highlighted it for our community, said this is an opportunity or a potential and made our community aware of where to get funding. So I am still highly supportive of this uh, motion as it's written. And, um, you know, it, maybe Gray County has different, uh, you know, priorities. I know that affordable housing is a priority. Maybe the way they do that is different than the way we could support it at our local level. So thank you. Thank you. So um, if you did notice uh, a check mark went up beside my name, that certainly isn't um, in support of of the motion at hand. I do know from Gary County that they felt that uh, this, um, this funding stream was not um, a fit for Gray County. There's a couple members, uh, or actually Madam CAO first, and then I will go to Councillor Townsend. Madam CAO. Mayor, uh, just, just to clarify, if I may, um, for members of council, the community improvement plan, West Gray does not have a community improvement plan just yet. It's coming to council for dis, uh, December 1st. However, there's a 20 day appeal period that follows that. So our community improvement plan is not going to be approved until at least you know, toward the end of December. And in that plan, what we were proposing for support in community or in affordable housing was if we had any municipally owned property, we could work with the county to see if there's a fit just like we had done recently in, in Durham. So I just wanted that clarification out there that our plan, our CIP is not approved yet. So that, that's one component that we would have to adjust uh, as we discuss this motion. Councillor Townsend, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. A um, Couple of things. First of all, does staff have the capacity to run with this if we were to agree to the, uh, um, to the program? And second of all, do we need Great County support to move forward recognizing they don't see it as a fit, but if we do, does that impede because there's a conflict in, in positions there from us moving forward? Madam CAO, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for the question. My concern is that the county is the expert in affordable housing, so I would not be able to proceed with any application without speaking with them. Um, and you know, I'm happy to have that conversation. I don't know what the capacity would be. I don't know what we would... Um, be looking at so uh, for me to just say that I've got an idea right now I don't um, I, I really haven't put my mind to us taking the lead on affordable housing I'm absolutely supportive and encouraged by by our, our role as facilitating with the county but I haven't thought about what it would look like for, from a staff perspective to uh, take the lead on this further okay. Councillor you. Townsend oh yeah thank you nope. That's okay thank you Councillor Shea Thank you, it's Councillor Shea. Uh, my, my understanding is that this resolution is not to prepare an application. 
uh, and would actually not require any uh, direct or immediate uh, staff uh, involvement whatsoever, rather that it was to support hypothetical applications that might come out of the woodwork by uh, uh, nonprofit organizations or others uh, who are looking at you know, possibly investing in West Gray to create um, affordable housing. I, I think it's a, it's a, um, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it seems to me mostly to be a, a well-intended and noble gesture uh, rather than uh, um, a, a project that we're going to be sinking uh, significant resources into. I think it's us saying that uh, we're, we're open to the idea of affordable housing projects if people want to bring them forward. We will help them uh, get support from the federal level if um, they qualify. Uh, it's not that we're going to be doing this work. We're just willing to say we will support people who come forward uh, wanting to do this work. Uh, Councillor Herger, you might want to correct me. That's that's my reading of the intent of this motion. Yes, that, okay. that's exactly what it is to to connect the dots between everything. Anything further, Councillor Shea? No. So uh, as I say, uh, I, I would support it because I think the more we talk about this in positive terms, the more likely that projects like this are going to come out of the woodworks. Maybe not during this, you know, month and a half window that's opened up, but maybe next year or maybe the year after, because people know that West Gray is interested in, in this sort of thinking. So that's why I would support it. And I think if um, there was an opportunity for subsequent funding, that, that would be the appropriate time to have that consideration. Um, anyway, uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. It's uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I think what the mayor had uh, kind of uh, just spelled out for me is I, I think this is a county, uh, county driven um, thing that's going on here, all the affordable and attainable housing. And I think one of the key components that I, I listened to is that they're not really in support of this particular grant or this, this stream. And they will be the ones that are going to eventually staff it. And I think if we took it on without their support, we may not have that support from them. And they are the, the specialists on, in doing it. Yes, we all support uh, and we're all in for uh, affordable and attainable housing. But I think the, the, the county's kind of, again, I think even the CEO suggested they're the experts in it. So I don't think I can support it at this time. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Um, so if I'm understanding Councillor Herbert's intention with the motion, it's a, a support. I see the word so like that we would provide supportive resolution from Council supporting any projects that would come forth that might come forth from the community um, that, uh, that she's not looking to West Gray staff to necessarily submit an application, but that Council would um, show their support for a community application. That's what I'm gathering. And if, if that's the intent um, of Councillor Herbert's motion, um, my question through Mayor Robinson to Councillor Herbert would be, would she consider um, amending the wording at the end of her motion, um, which reads um, that the CEO will direct staff to complete supporting applications? Perhaps, Councillor Hergert, what I'm suggesting is if that wording was removed, um, then that would take pressure off of um, staff that were creating uh, work for them. And it would just put the onus back on Council that we would be supporting um, through resolution. So as a mover or seconder of the motion, I'm asking if Councillor Hergert would be open to making um, that amendment at the end of her motion. Just for clarity, thank you. Councillor Herger, um, is that something you would consider? Yes, I would consider that, that's fine. Okay, so the last paragraph is removed from the motion and we've got confirmation from both the mover and seconder. Madam Clerk, so you've got that noted, thank you. Okay, Councillor Hamilton, is there anything further? 
No, thank you, Mayor Robinson. And I appreciate the spirit in which this was brought forth. And thank you, Councilor Hergert, for, for bringing it to your attention. Thank you. Clerk Sharbuck, you have your hand up. Thank you. Through you, um, Your Worship, I just wanted to uh, clarify that that last paragraph was removed. So the motion is exactly as Councillor Herger had read it. And as you see in your package, um, just ending at the support piece. And we can do, if, if a nonprofit group or a, somebody eligible applied for a grant and a letter of support from the municipality would help their application, then we could certainly do that without that last paragraph. So just wanted to clarify what's it going in the minutes and I think we've got it. Okay. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson. Um, yeah, I think I think all of our council supports um, uh, more affordable or attainable housing. Um, and um, I, I understand the the uh, gist of what um, uh, Council Herger is, is putting forward here. I think uh, our community improvement plan will help, uh, will maybe be an opportunity for some people to to uh, do something with this. Uh, it's just one of the many avenues there. Um, and I, if someone comes forward looking to do something with uh, affordable housing, I think that, um, you know, our obligation is to forward them to the right uh, right direction, like whether it be county or how, or look for funding at um, So, you know, I support the 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 um, overall um, philosophy behind the motion, and and uh, I think it's it's uh, supports what we're trying to do as a municipality. Uh, whether whether we do it or whether we push it forward to the county level, um, I think it's just our obligation to to support anybody that comes forward looking to do something. So. I'd be in support of, of it. Thank Madam you. CAO. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and just uh, following the conversation about the community improvement plan, um, respectfully, I would, I would like to address the language in this motion that says we actually have a, a CIP. Um, I'm just uh, communicating with our planner and she's, she's suggesting we could change that to, whereas West Gray has a draft community improvement plan, if this motion is going to pass this evening. Uh, the mover of the motion, Councillor Hergert, would you yeah. be agreeable to that word? Yes, I am agreeable to the word draft being inserted. Thank you. As a seconder, Councillor Hamilton, are you also agreeable to that? Yes, thank you. That's a welcome amendment. Thank you. Okay, I notice, Councillor Hamilton, you still have your hand up. Is there anything further? No, my mistake. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Townsend then. Uh, yes, um, Councillor Townsend, I'd like to get a clarifying um, response from the uh, Madam CIO. I, I think I heard that we would have to get involved in the application. So it's not a matter of just support. Um, and the fear was that we don't have the skill to do that. So we'd have to go to the county who doesn't support it. Did I understand that correctly? Or can developers apply themselves directly? And then we end up having to support it. Uh, thank you for the question through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, two parts. First, um, Councillor Shea's uh, clarification was helpful because um, that was not my interpretation of this motion. So removing that last paragraph takes away some of, some of that, um, uh, my understanding about staff involvement. Uh, ending the motion to say that um, West Gray supports this by municipal resolution is, is something that we would do. Uh, so I, I don't have any concerns that way. Um, the, so I, I think that we're good where we are right now. We've got a little bit of uh, clarification on CIP. Those were really the only two concerns I had. So I'm, I'm pleased with where this is landing. So thank you, Councillor. Anything further, well, Councillor Townsend? Yes, yeah, so it would not take any effort on the point of um, West Gray staff. If someone decided to apply, which I'm assuming they can then into this program. Uh, three, Madam Mayor, yeah, that, that's my understanding. As I read the, the, the ending paragraph of this motion, Councillor, uh, we are just supporting any applications that we happen to be um, asked to comment on through a municipal resolution. Okay, thank you. And, and in fact, that's Council's action, not staff. Right, yes, yes, thank you. 
Anything further? Okay. No, thank All you. Those in, you're welcome. All those in favor indicate with a check mark. Those opposed with the next mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am not in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, not in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, not in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson in favor. Motion carried. Item 18. Oh, actually, are, is there any other new business? I do have. I do have a. Councillor Hergert. Thank you very much. I have uh, an item that came out of our uh, Committee of the Whole planning meeting uh, on November 10. The discussion came up regarding name, naming of streets. And at that time, I guess it was, um, it was going to be asked that the developer have discussions with our planner about whether or not there was a, a street naming bylaw. And before we get too far down the road that has no name, we should consider the possibility or the potential of having a street naming bylaw. And so I just didn't want it to get lost uh, down the road, but I would like to have um, some discussion around that and maybe maybe next committee of the whole or you know down the road a little bit like that would be fine. But I don't want it to be so far down the planning process that we have ended up before where we're beyond the point where we can have a discussion about it. And that's all. Okay, so it's been noted by staff on that particular um, Thank you. Uh, new business item. Councillor Townsend. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, two things. First of all, the uh, notice of motion I've already sent to the clerk that was mm -hmm. discussed earlier, just to make sure it does in fact get covered for our next uh, next uh, council meeting. And that uh, was on resolution 7820 from uh, Committee of the Whole that uh, determines the number of members on the Committee of Adjustment. And my second one I'd like to raise is the, um, we uh, approved a motion, I believe it was the last meeting, um, a resolution to actually uh, deal with a entrance into the hospital on the south side where people could walk in and make it more accessible. But there was no direction as to who would do that when it would get done, how it would get done. So I just wanted to ask Madam CAO, is that in fact um, a staff activity that you will undertake to communicate with the hospital? Madam CAO, please. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for the question. I am under the understanding that our Director of Public Works has already initiated those conversations. Uh, we can go to him if you like, uh, Madam Mayor, but that's my understanding. That's yes. fine. I, uh, I, I trust what you said. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very good. That was it. Very good, Councillor Townsend. Anything further? No? Councillor Townsend, anything further? No, sorry. That was everything. Okay. Uh, Councillor Shea, then. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, quite some time ago, we had a delegation come and present uh, about uh, renaming or co-naming the... Uh, Heritage Bridge after uh, Carol Lawrence. Uh, we postponed that discussion um, while we were developing a policy on asset naming. Uh, we have since developed that policy and so that delegation was put on hold, but I don't think they were refused. I think they were just put in in abeyance. So I'm just, I would look forward to a report back somewhere in the next two or three months about uh, what the status of that um, project is. Thank you. Thank you. That's been noted. Anything further, members of council? Seeing none. We're now moving on to item 18, addendum. Quick Sherbeck, anything? Through you, Your Worship. No, the only addendum was included in the agenda, the bylaw for Zabel agreement. Thank you. Item 19, closed session, incomplete only. That is an NA. Item 20, matters arising from closed session. That is also an NA. 
Uh, item 21, a question period. Supervisor Hewlett, could you please assist in managing this item? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Any members of the public wishing to participate in this public comment period can do so in a variety of ways similar to um, the period previous. Um, for the question period, you can do so by raising your hand. If you have joined us over the online meeting software, you can do so by clicking the raise your hand function, usually located in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Alternatively, if you've joined us over the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand as well. Star nine will also lower your hand. The other option for participating in the public question period is to send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor. At this time, Madam Mayor, I'm not seeing any members of the public wishing to comment. Just taking a quick review of the dashboard. I am not seeing any members, nor have I received any correspondence. Uh, I can't hear anything. I don't know about anybody else. They look like they're froze up there, Jeff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking it looks like, like. Okay, I'm just call, um, asking for order, please. Uh, Clerk Sharbeck, on item 23, could you please read the recommendation on the adjournment? Uh, the recommendation is that we do now adjourn at 11.26 p.m. to meet again on December 1st at 10 a.m. or at the call of the chair. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving this motion? Yes, Councillor Townsend, I'm moving the motion. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Yeah, this is Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I will second the motion. All those in favor, indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend? Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone.